you live from the Comedy Mothership here in Austin, Texas for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hitchcliffe! Who's ready for the best fucking night of their lives, huh? We're here. You made it. Mama, we made it. Here at the number one live podcast in the world, Kill Tony. Brought to you by some amazing sponsors, Yoni. I didn't get that. uh, I didn't get the three that I had to write down. How about one more time for the best damn band in the land, huh? On the horns, Carlos Sosa, Raul Vallejo, and Fernando Castillo. Michael Gonzalez on the drums. Nick Lewis joining us on the bass, or as I call him, C Madness, because he can see. Matt Muling on the electric guitar, and our dear band leader, the great and powerful John Dees on the keys, who wrangles these people, finds the best musicians in this city for us to play with. So much fun. Hey, Truly, I always say this, but I fucking mean it. An action-packed show, loaded up and ready to go tonight. Some very special appearances by very special people. It's all going to go down all at once. Before we get started, here's a little bit more from the amazing sponsors that made it all possible. The Sunset Strip Comedy Club in Austin, Texas is now open. Check out Red Band's secret show every Thursday. Go to sunsetstripatx.com for tickets. Are you guys ready to start tonight's episode? Well, well, well. This is one of those nights that will, I believe, live in Kill Tony history. Two uh, unbelievable comedians. Uh, One of them I've been working with continuously for 17 years, a legend of the comedy store. One I just found here uh, a few days ago. Randomly, she was performing in The Little Boy, and I saw her set, and I fell in love. We ended up drinking together all night. And she is one of my new favorite comedians in the world. This is her first time on panel at Kill Tony. I do believe her first time ever on a podcast. So here are our guests. Make some noise for two of the greats, Elaine and Ian Edwards, everybody. Elaine and Ian Edwards. There's Elaine. Make some noise for Elaine, her first time on the show. Oh, a a nail just fell off. A nail, you lost a nail, Elaine. There you go. Who wants it? Come on. There you go. This little Mexican boy wants it. There you go. How about one more time for Ian Edwards, ladies and gentlemen, one of the greats. This episode brought to you by Skylight Frame and Game Time, by the way, for those of you wondering who our amazing sponsors are. Ian Edwards, welcome what up, back, fam? my friend. How's, how's it going? Uh, it's good to be here, man. Absolutely. This is a, a fun show to be at, sitting next to Elaine. I can smell how old she is. <laughs> That's my pussy, <laughs> which is the name of my documentary out on Hulu. That's my pussy is the name of your documentary? Wow. Should it have been something else, Tony? I mean, I felt a fish. I will look into changing it. Okay. Red Band, nice to see you with your clothes on. <laughs> I used to work at a massage parlor. Red Band would come in with his dick already out. <laughs> And let's just say he thinks the butthole is the G-spot. Hit me. (laughs) All right, let's get it going. Here we fucking go. Elaine has joined the fray. Uh, I'm very excited about this. Maybe you heard me uh, give the audience our little uh, little intro last week, but we got drunk together. Turns out she's been doing stand-up comedy for exactly 50 years. How about a hand for 50 Uh, years? Come on, I ain't dead yet. She's 74 years old, started when she was 24, and I caught a set in the little boy. Adam Egget, the booker of the club, was in the back of the room howling. She was talking about, what was it, your pussy? 
I think it was. I do a few pussy jokes, but uh, he really liked the way that I said the N-word, so. Right, right. I'm just kidding. I said the whole thing. But it, <laughs> no, no, it's, well, you could say it back in the day, but I love the mothership, greatest club in the world, and, um, I, you know, this is as close as I'll ever, uh, ever get to superstardom, so here we go. I love it, Elaine. This is your first time on Kill Tony, so you might not know that over 200 innocent souls signed up for tonight's show. Look Absolutely. at all those losers in there, huh? Anything can happen. Happen. If I pull their name out, they get 60 seconds of stand-up comedy time uninterrupted. You know their time is up and you're the sound of a kitten. That means they have to wrap it up then or else they bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. And that it cuts off their time. I interview them after that. <laughs> that scare you a little bit? <laughs> Let's just say uh, some blood came out of... Uh... Yeah, it scared me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, but to get tonight's show started, uh, I'm going to pre-pull a name. Whoop, we'll grab that one, too. Oh. I'll take that one. I'll trade you my we'll nail fucking, for that. We'll load them up. This looks great. And uh, we'll get both of those people wrangled up from the bar across the street, the uh, Sixth Street famous bar Poor Choices, which is a real scummy bar, by the way. But we love them. We love scummy bars. Vulcan Gas Company, Poor Choices, Sunset Strip Comedy Club. We love, we love shitty Sixth Street bars. That's what we take pride. Austin takes pride. More bars per capita than any other city. It's incredible. Get $2 shots over at Poor Choices anytime you want. But while we wrangle those comedians, some of you may know that we have a new regular that starts the show. Oh, the lovely Heidi. Ooh, listen to the crowd pop for Heidi, everybody. It's happening. Kill Tony fame affects everybody. To get tonight's show started, a fucking force of nature, ladies and gentlemen. This guy's been filling in for the great Hans Kim for months while he prepares for his huge show at the Forum. Uh, the rematch between Hans Kim and Rick Diaz will be live streamed from the forum. But filling in for him, the newest regular, uh, absolute sensation. This guy just did uh, theater with me this weekend in San Jose. He crushes. Let's see a brand new minute from the one and only Casey Rocket. <laughs> La princesa. All right. <laughs> uh, I got to get out of here. I blacked out on Klonopin last night, and uh, apparently I kept making my girlfriend listen to pro-union coal mining music again, so it's just, which side are you on, Lord? You know, she's crying, that old chestnut. Uh, when are you going to get help, you know? I'll tell you who needs help. The coal miners, but that's fucking Biden's America, you know what I mean? I, uh, I <laughs> just pop it one second, all right. Cool. I wish uh, all drugs gave you flashbacks. You know, people always say that about LSD, uh, that it gets stored in your bones or whatever, which is such a scary thing to tell someone on LSD, right? And you're like, yeah. what bones? And uh, <laughs> whose bones? And uh, like, I wish you could just be walking through the mall with your friends and just pop your hip, just get a ketamine flashback from Bonnaroo 2012. You know, you're just, oh, so they're called minions. Huh? <laughs> I don't want to go to Spencer's Gifts anymore. Thank you, Casey Rocket. All right. There it is again. The man, the myth, the crab man. Thank you. Casey motherfucking rocket has striked again. Uh, I squeezed too hard. Yeah. <laughs> I squeezed too hard. That's wild. I used to do that when I was a little kid. I used to do that thing where I'd make my face all red. I think I would die yeah. if I did it now. Uh, yeah, it was fun. Um, I squeezed, I squeezed Casey, too hard. I'm to do it right now. I know. Another amazing performance, Casey. Uh, I loved the eyeballs. Very scary. Was anyone scared? Let's get a show of hands. Oh, there's a lot of hands right. up in the air, shockingly. At a comedy <laughs> show, you genuinely had people scared. Terrified. Cool. Yeah. Terrified. Thank you. She's gorgeous. Are you, you tired? You, yes. You move around so quickly. <laughs> I know. It was just one minute, and I tensed too hard. One time, I, uh, 
I used to do the Dutchman's key. Um, my favorite bit <laughs> ever. Which is so, where I, yeah. I put a lead key in my mouth and uh, that's it. And uh, <laughs> well, that's about it. And one time I had the lead key, so I'm kind of dipping the key and it's leaking lead in my blood and I tensed real hard and I had to sit down on stage for like five minutes, something about the lead. <laughs> he puts a key in his mouth yeah. and proceeds on with minutes and minutes and minutes of his act before coughing up the key. It's something you really got to see live, I guess, for it to translate how hilarious it is. But when he's in full action and moving around, you realize that he's had a key in his mouth for a lot of the performance. It's the payoff is huge. Again, you're, you yeah. remind me of one of my uh, my grandson's friends. Um, his name's Craig, and he also was okay. missing some teeth. Oh, good. And uh, he also titty fucked me upon meeting me. <laughs> So play your cards right, Casey, and <laughs> take this rocket ship to Teddy Fuck uh, Galaxy or wherever you want to go. You go to an Applebee's. Why? Well, yeah. well, am, why am I blushing? It doesn't make any sense. It sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> when was this? When did this Teddy Fucking take place? Well, you know, back in you know, for, everything's. Well, it was about an hour ago, but it was. Uh, <laughs> No, it was, uh, I don't know, 1975. People have been titty fucking for years. Right, Ian? Yeah, yeah, that's what we do. Thanks, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, have you seen Casey Rocket before? Uh, shit, I still didn't see him. He was moving so fast. <laughs> <laughs> very fast, very fast. He is a squiggler. He's yeah, you're... Are you, you, you take any substances? Uh, totally, cl totally clean. Really? Jeez. Yeah, I'm sober. Been sober for many years. Yeah. You feel like you're on an Adderall right now. <sighs> no, no, no. Just me. This motherfucker okay. is the human form of Adderall. Yeah. <laughs> That's what everybody thinks. Surprisingly, he's one of the only sober people in this venue right now. <laughs> now, is there a drug that you could be coerced into participating in? Like if Joe Rogan came through here and was like, let's do bumps of coke off Elaine's of tits, what would you do? <laughs> Good question. Sorry, I, that's a bad Joe Rogan impression, but... <laughs> what would you say, Casey? What would I say? Uh, and it happens like tonight, like it's like Monday night. Let's say I call him right now, and he, and he I don't have his... Let's say Tony calls him, and, yeah. and he goes, yeah, what's up? What's going on? Is there a bow and mm -hmm. arrow down there? And he comes down. <laughs> And I go, yeah, there's a bow and arrow, but you gotta, the only way to get it is to, by doing coke off my tits with uh, the newest Muppet. <laughs> I guess what I'm saying is, would you do coke with somebody if they asked you? Could you be peer pressured, Casey? We're all human beings. We could be peer pressured. Uh, yeah, if you guys wanted it really bad, I guess, yeah, I could. Does anybody have any cocaine? <laughs> I didn't think you would actually say yes to that. Well, good for you. Straight edge is cool. Yeah, yeah, it's punk rock, rock and roll stuff. I got it. <laughs> Casey is scared to death right now. I've never seen that look in your eyes exactly. Uh, an unbelievable weekend yeah. on the road. We had so much goddamn fun. Casey is absolutely hilarious in Very the green funny. rooms, at the restaurants, at the coffee shops, at the airport. You're a bundle of positive energy. I love you. Way to Thank get you. tonight's show started. That's it. Thank you, guys. That's Appreciate it. Casey Hell yeah. Rocket, the newest regular. All right, and so it shall begin. I pre-pulled two names. We're gonna see, hopefully they come out in the right order here. Uh, make some noise for your first comedian. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do 60 seconds uninterrupted from Lino Rodriguez. Lino Rodriguez, everybody, here we go. Straight out of the bucket, anything can happen. Hello, my name is Lino Rodriguez. I'm a door guy on 6th Street. And right now my main diet is pizza and cigarettes, you know? I really gotta stop eating cigarettes. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm actually Puerto Rican. I, I'm a Puerto Rican that can't speak Spanish, though. If I had to compare that to anything, I think it'd be like being a Catholic priest that doesn't fuck kids. Uh, everyone expects me to, but I'm just one of the good ones. <laughs> uh, I wasn't raised that way. Um, the other day I was hanging out watching my new favorite movie, Tyler Perry's Medea Goes to Palestine, and... Uh, oh my girl, just get a learn. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I started to think about how I like to do Molly and compliment bald people on their eyebrows, you know? <laughs> they don't really hear that anymore. I actually think they should start dyeing their heads like uh, Easter eggs. That'd be fucking... <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm okay. Lino. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lino yeah. Rodriguez. Thank you. Our first bucket pull of the night. A slow start and a sluggish ending, but the middle was amazing there. You got laughs. I didn't think any of it was funny, but this is a hot crowd. Um, this is the best April Fool set I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, it's good. It was good. Oh, Ian Edwards? I mean, it's the, what's the irony of him doing a Tyler Perry joke and I'm sitting next to White Medea? <laughs> <laughs> it is absolutely a fantastic point. Good point, Ian. <laughs> now, you had some stuff about fucking kids in the middle that really piqued my interest. <laughs> because that's a real issue facing our country. It is. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> you, so well, what, what is it about that that you find humorous? Ah. Oh. Like, where did that joke come from, I guess? I want to get inside your head for a minute. Got you. Ah, it came just, um, everybody expects it to happen, you know? When you're brown or if you're a Catholic priest, they're, either way. They're we, got like, it, we got yeah, it, we got it, Lino. Okay, um, yeah. okay. Yeah. over here, Lino. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, about two, three years now. Okay, where do yeah. you, you live here in Austin for how long? A year. Where did you yeah. live before that? I lived in New Orleans. Uh, New Orleans. And, uh, oh, some fans nice. of New Orleans in the crowd. <laughs> How do you think I got all these beats? <laughs> That's right. Oh, wow. Suck it. Come on, Red Band. Come on, there you go. Okay. Red Band had six necklaces in his car. <laughs> <laughs> That's so hot. Selino, so, you're Puerto Rican. <laughs> You can't speak Spanish. I've yeah. never seen a green Puerto Rican person before. What, is, <laughs> what exactly is your diet? You made a joke about eating cigarettes that uh, literally <laughs> silenced uh, every uh, part of the city. <laughs> uh, I, I worked inside for a while, so I think it just started to turn Greek after a while. I don't know. Uh huh. I, I work from home. Uh, and you, I work at night now, so I'm like a, like a pale, I guess. What do you do from home at, during the day? I used to work on AI cars. I used to help program uh, those. AI for, cars? Yeah, AV cars, like uh, Google cars and things like that, the self-driving cars. Okay. Oh, I, shit. Hook us up, fam. <laughs> oh, no, they didn't give me shit. Uh, but it was cool. <laughs> Puerto Rican take that shit. <laughs> so now you want to... only steal real cars? <laughs> oh, I get you. Yeah, we can figure that out together. Hell yeah. Okay, that is the birth of crime, ladies and gentlemen. That's how it happens. A Puerto Rican and a black. Uh, That's my favorite Pornhub search. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me, fellas. There it is. A little late, a little late. A little late, like my period. Thanks, Red Man. Hello. Uh, <laughs> Hit me. There it is. Hit me. That's all. Off to what Red Man asked me to do to him last night. Whoa. Takes right. a lot to make him come. So how, uh, <laughs> how old are you? Did you say that already? Uh, I'm 27. You're 27. You look yes. like you're 46. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like being 27 uh, in 2024? Uh, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> There's the Pornhub sound. No. A minute and a half after the Pornhub joke, for those of you keeping track of Red Band in the zone tonight already. Um, Lino, have you been on this show before? Yes, I actually got on a couple of weeks ago. That was How really did that cool. go for you? Not as good. Not as good. Uh, maybe, maybe for me, I don't know. Everyone seemed to have a good time. So well, I'm cool with that. Okay, don't do that. Don't, yeah. do, don't, don't, no. don't do that. Yeah, don't, don't do that, Lino. Yeah, ever, sorry. Again. <laughs> ever again. So, uh, Lino, what did we not find out about you in your last interview that would be interesting? What was the frame, main frame of the interview last time you were on? What was the most interesting thing we found out about you? What did I make oh, jokes yeah. about, talk about? Yeah, I had a real kick about my dad getting murdered. You thought that was Oh, great. yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll yeah. Back. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine is on fire. Now's a good time for me to promote. Elaine, for some reason, uh, decided to plug Adam Ray Comedy on YouTube. Um, a brand new Crowdwork special from Adam Ray. I don't know what you and Adam have going on, Elaine, but fucking... Well, oh. the way that Red Bands is, uh, is into Latinas, I'm into Jews. I so. love it. 
<laughs> now, do you mind me asking what happened? Is this? Uh, I don't want to uh, pour salt on a on a band aid, but what, what, um, what, ha what happened to your father? Um, he got murked with a baseball bat. He was, I mean, like, he got beat up by a couple of guys, but one of them had a bat. Right. And what yeah. did he? And he hit him upside the head. Yeah, a couple of times. God damn it! Do you have the video? <laughs> <laughs> This is the actual, okay. we have audio from the, there you go, there was a well, referee there. Why was there, why was there a referee there, Red Band? <laughs> it was also in a bowling alley, so not a lot of people know that. Did you know that? Did you know that your father was murdered in a bowling alley? Not, it's news to me. Okay. Uh, so, what did we, you probably oh. went home that night thinking, wow, I probably should have brought up something else or talked about something else about my entire life. Uh, what, do right. we, what do we not know about you, Lino? Oh, shit, man. What else do you know about me? Uh, Maybe you no, didn't think about I, it at no, all. No, I didn't. Actually, I, I've been in a car chase once. That was crazy. Okay. Was, with okay. the police? No, oh. with, with a hillbilly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, what I happened? Take us through it. What did you do? Well, my friends and I were out having a good time, and they decided, hey, let's, I don't know, the statute's of limitation, how long is that? You're good. All right, cool. Uh, 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 this guy insists on the <laughs> interview being boring. I don't want to break I'm the sorry. law now. Uh, Allegedly. And uh, they decided to jump out of the car and start hitting mailboxes. And then halfway through that, how I How old were you during this? I was like 16. Okay. And, uh, Dad's still alive? No, right. There's been gone. There's no one to, no one to fucking, <laughs> no one Stop. to spank you. No. <laughs> Just doing whatever you want in a fatherless fucking society. <laughs> Typical Puerto Rican childhood. I... <laughs> you want to feel my tits, Lino? Uh, of course. I feel bad for you. Do you want to feel? Do you want to feel his? Yeah, we can feel. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I feel bad for you. I just say, you know, it's. I, I, you, I'd love to. All okay, right, let's okay. do it. Well, let's let's finish uh, finish up your story. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, let's hear about the car chase. <laughs> one, <laughs> one or two. And then um, not, I, uh, halfway through, we, I heard this voice say, "He done fucked up now." <laughs> Coming from like really far away from me. Oh shit. And then all of a sudden, I tell uh, like a, a truck was on our ass, and I was in a Bronco, like an old 2002 Bronco. So I started whipping that bitch. And I got the fuck out. I, I, I drove as fast as I could, th could, could through backwoods of Mississippi. And my friends said, hit a right. So I did. And then when I did, I, I sort of slid into it. Then I heard, and then they crashed into the woods. And I got the fuck out of there. Um, wow. Dukes of Hazzard style. Um, I know it's really. <laughs> wow. I hope you understood what I said, my mouth. <laughs> I didn't realize Mississippi had Asian drivers. Um, <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and take back the tit offer. Is that okay? That, that's fine. <laughs> that story. I understand sucked. completely. Lino, what is your love life like? The world wants to know. <laughs> How's Lino's pussy game? You look like the guy that answers the door at a haunted Mexican restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> very funny, Tony. I don't know. That deserves I, more laughter. We'll edit it's that all in. right. That was a very funny joke. That's why it's your show. Yeah. <laughs> Do that for it's me, been, It's go. been a weird year. I got, yeah. I got married and divorced last year. Oh, How wow. did that happen? Okay, there we and go. Then, here we go. Now we're here getting we somewhere. Now we're cooking with gas. <laughs> let's, yeah. Let's you, uh, you, Ian. He asked you one hour ago, has there anything happened that you didn't tell us from the last show? Uh, and now you just bring that shit up? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. I ran a red light with Forrest Gump bullshit story. <laughs> You got a dead dad and a divorce story. Just locked and loaded in those fucking Abercrombie pockets. Uh, we're finding out a lot more. Yeah. There's a lot more. This is like a Puerto Rican Forrest Gump over here. I'm excited about that. So tell us about the marriage and divorce. Oh, man, it was uh, you met, quick. You, how'd you meet her? Uh, we're, we're, uh, she saw me doing comedy once. Oh, and... God. <laughs> was that when you got divorced? No. <laughs> And she, <laughs> she liked my style. And oh, boy. Did and you say started... style? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, infatuated. And, and Especially fat. <laughs> so and, and then, she yeah, saw started... you do comedy. How long were you together before you decided to get married? Good question. Uh, about a year or so. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty fast. How did you propose to her? That's always something that the ladies care about. We want to be romanced and impressed. And, I know. was at an amusement park in, in Gatlinsburg. Oh. In front of a Ferris wow. wheel with a ring. I believe that's I where was... slavery ended. Yeah. Or like that. <laughs> I got... no. what, happened, what happened at Del Taco? 
<laughs> now, what did she say? You said what? You said, I love you. It's only been a year, but let's do this. What'd you say? Basically, uh, I don't know. We've been talking about it. She brought it up. I was into it. But it, it was all me, dude. I, I, li I liked her. And, what, what made uh, you want to get married, though? I don't know. That's, that's, a, that's a great question. Like, it, when, you, when you're in that shit, it just sort of happens. Okay. Yeah. Did she like you titty it. fucker? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hell yeah. What dude. the fuck was that? <laughs> uh, so how long were you married until divorce came on the table, and why was uh, divorce imminent? Four. It was four months we were married. And then what happened? And wait, wait. It actually took a little longer for us to get married. It also took a little longer to get the answer to my fucking uh, sorry, question. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, Jesus sorry. Christ. Uh, sorry. The numbers uh, don't matter. It just uh, it blew up. Toxic. Um, How? What? Uh, Come on. Give ooh. us an example of the toxicity of your city. Of your. All city. right. Uh, you know, she getting she, finding out they're not like you know faithful or like you know. Was that what happened? Yeah, yeah it's cheating and shit. You know? How did you it find out that she was cheating on you? Ah, uh, she was supposed to be on a trip in Hawaii. Uh huh. And she was in Texas. <laughs> okay, how did you find and, this out? Oh, dude. Did you have one of your cars follow her? I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. Funny. No. Funny, Ian. I might have to plead the fifth on this one. Uh, Why you would you so. plead the fifth, didn't you? I might have to plead the fifth. Why would you plead oh. the fifth on this? Because you're on a, a podcast right now yeah, where uh, interviews happen and anything right, can right, happen. You're right. uh, be, we, because, uh, I, here we go. I, okay. Jesus Christ. All right. <laughs> He's not going to save you uh, here. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't have Wi-Fi up you're, there. You're more nervous uh, uh, now than when you did your one minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, Jesus. Um, well, you know, I, I was cleaning the house, getting ready for her to come back for the trip. Uh -huh. And uh, I checked her location because she said she was going to go visit her family. In Hawaii? No, she was just with friends. She was going. She Mississippi is where I'm from. Uh huh. And uh, when I found her location... It said she's uh, three minutes down the road in Texas. Oh, oh boy! Yeah. Shit. So I went. I went there. Ooh. And she was there with someone I knew. Oh no! Uh, Who was the someone that you knew? A friend I don't know of if yours? I should do all it's, that. You don't need uh, to name a name. Uh, you fucking idiot! Uh, don't name a name. Uh, a, fr a, fr a friend of mine. I thought so. A friend of yours. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Should we should we call that friend right no, now? No 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> what what I bet <laughs> no 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 that's a bad idea because because the, the, I just <laughs> thank you Elaine so much well, you know who's gonna pick up it's gonna be Red Band so I want <laughs> I want to avoid that well I'm so sorry look but guess what uh, when you get cheated on it makes you stronger you know oh, yeah. you learn about yourself yeah right? I got laid last week it was uh, I've been like, what happened last week yes I, I got I, I got with ladies last week. How did you, what happened One there? Night. We're gonna go back to this, yeah. by the way. Elaine tried to bail you out with I'm that sorry, phone I'm call sorry, shit. We're going up. back to it. But what I happened last up. week? I uh, met a nice lady. We went out. It was cool. So okay, yeah, fuck yeah, it then. Yeah, Good yeah, job. Yeah, so Great I'm interview. I'm, so I'm still gonna so squeeze sorry. you for this. We're I'm going sorry. back. Here we go. Hey, over uh, here, Lena. Yeah, Stop sorry, making sorry. fucking noises with your mouth. Answer the questions that I ask you. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. I'm so. So when you went to the house with your friend and your wife, yeah, what exactly happened? Oh man, uh, it's e this part's I, I, I easy. You just sorry. tell this us what happened you instead say of it. all the prefacing shit and yeah, everything. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, I uh, I walked up to the door and I looked in the window and they were on the couch together. What were they doing on the couch? They were hanging out under some blankets and shit. You know. Under some blankets or on some blankets? Under. <laughs> under. Well, how did you know it was them under the blankets? How did you not know that I, it was? I, I could see them. Like it was. You could the, see their heads. Yeah. And, and they were. Were they were watching a movie? <laughs> What were they watching, Lino? Uh, Elaine, I don't know if you noticed. Watching, uh, He's not good at answering questions. Uh, let's no, no, we gotta uh, keep, kind of keep him one side. track at a time side. here. Um, so then, what happened? Did you knock on the door? Yeah. And then what happened? They said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and they said no. They, get out, they said get out of here. <laughs> they told you to get out of here. Yeah, get out of here. What are you doing here? Oh, you're, wait, make, wait, you're wait. trying to make jokes again. <laughs> wait, let's act this out. Keep the music on, Red Ben. You be oh, the guy. Man. I'll this be is, his this girl. Is crazy. Okay. Ready? Give me a knock. <laughs> oh, shit. Fuck. Get Hi. out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. What are you doing here? Lino, what are you doing here? Uh, I thought you were supposed to be in Hawaii. Oh, wait. No, I thought I was supposed to. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I'm not into brown guys anymore. I'm into, I'm into black guys. <laughs> Damn. 
Is, is that what you said? Wow. What, what did you say? I said, what, what the fuck are you doing here? Why, why, why are you here? I thought you were in Hawaii. Well, we, our flight got changed. <laughs> okay, hold on, <laughs> Elaine. What did she say when you said you're supposed to be in Hawaii? Uh, she, she ran off. Where she did she run off to? The bedroom. Oh, back yeah, there where yeah. she was safe. Yeah. Did you chase uh, her? No. No, that was it. Uh, no, but it, it erupted some. Yeah, it was bad. It was was you? Good. Did you and your buddy uh, almost fight? Oh, uh, not really. I I was more. I was gonna fight him, but I was more concerned with the other bullshit that was going on. I, I didn't care about him. He's a fucking piece of shit, you know. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So I was more worried about uh, like what what's happening, you know. Right. Never got an answer. But the divorce uh, was quick and easy because you caught yeah. her cheating. Yeah. You didn't have to pay any of your uh, door guy money or anything like that, right? No, 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 no. That's uh, yeah, that's, going, that's ongoing bullshit, you know? Okay. But uh, no, I'm still balling. Okay. <laughs> All right. You got, a, you, you got a little joke book last time? Yeah, I got a little joke book. Such book. interesting things about you, yet it's such a terrible interview. It's absolutely <laughs> incredible. Great, man. Will you hit me with some music real quick? Uh-oh. Elaine. Uh-oh. Whoa. Hold him on, hold him on. Whoa, he's finally got some color in his face. Whoa. I love it. All right. I hope that makes up for your dead dad. <laughs> <laughs> Lino Rodriguez. There he goes, everybody. There he goes. Lino Rodriguez. Okay. And yet, it has begun. Hey, y'all. This podcast is sponsored by Game Time. Look, I'm in the business of selling tickets, and I want to make sure if you're buying a ticket to a live event, you're in good hands. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets or red band. This app is so easy to use, Tony. They got last-minute deals, which can save you up to 60% off buying last-minute for sports, concerts, comedy, and theater. It's also incredibly easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. You can get panoramic views from your seat and the venue before you buy. Ooh, amazing, red band. Game Time gives you the lowest price guarantee or they will credit you 110% of the difference. Not to mention your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code KILLTONY for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code K-I-L-L-T-O-N-Y for $20 off. That's why. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Hey, I'll ask any mom out there. Running a busy household can be pure chaos and stressful for the whole family. Who has what when, what's for dinner, what we need from the grocery store, did someone feed the dog? The mental load can be hard to stay on top of. But there's a way to make it all easier for mom and the entire family. The Skylight Calendar Red Band. The Skylight Calendar is a smart touchscreen calendar and organizer for all your chores, groceries, to-do lists, and a great way to manage appointments to make sure they never overlap and they're never missed. It helps keep Busy households on track and everyone on the same page so families can get time back for moments that matter. That's right, Red Band. I love this calendar and I'm going to gift it to every mom I know for Mother's Day because that's the kind of guy I am. Skylight Calendar is super easy to set up. No more constant reminders. No more cluttered paper calendars. No more worrying that someone has forgotten something. When the calendar is not in use, you can turn it into a digital picture frame. That's what I have. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. If you don't love the Skylight Calendar, you'll receive a full refund. They even offer our 120-day money-back guarantee and free returns. is a special limited-time offer for our listeners. Get 15% off your calendar right now when you go to skylightcal.com slash Tony. Get your Skylight calendar now. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-C-A-L dot com slash Tony. Mother's Day is right around the corner. So order today and get 15% off your purchase at skylightcal.com slash Tony. So here we go. Your next bucket pool, ladies and gentlemen, a minute uninterrupted goes to Jerry Carlin, everybody. Here we go with Jerry Carlin. I uh, had a mustache for a while, uh, but I think it looked silly on me, so I started uh, clean shaving my pubes. 
I uh, used to be a cutter, but now I just spit on people. My, uh, my grandpa is starting to lose his judgment. He can't really drive anymore. And um, there was a blackout in his neighborhood and he almost shot the guy. Sometimes I would like to be black, but uh, makeup is expensive. If uh, Kanye West has taught us anything, it's that the Jews ain't worth the squeeze. A uh, sex worker uh, bit my dick once, uh, so it was half off. Stop right there. Okay, Jerry Carlin, very good. Little, uh, some good old fucking old fashioned, I love it, smart one liners. Thank you. Delivered straight down the barrel. Welcome to the show, Jerry. This is your first time on, correct? Yes. I would recognize you. I do believe I saw you in that new Nickelodeon documentary. <laughs> Jerry, welcome to the show. How long have you been doing stand up? Uh, this is my second time. Second time ever? Wow. Thank you. How long have you been writing and preparing for this? Uh, these jokes, uh, maybe a month or so. And how Just old are writing. you? I'm 21. 21 years old. Look at this. A fantastic start to your career. Uh, you going to college? What's your story? No, um, just high school. I don't really want college. You're still in high school. Okay. Uh, all right. You are the world's youngest pedophile, I do believe. 21 out there chasing high schoolers around. You got to love it. Ian Edwards? I mean, he's so young, he looks like he has a skin routine. <laughs> and I'm getting strong school shooter vibes at the same time. Yeah, you look like the molester and the molestee at the same time. It's true. It's true. But that's a compliment, because that's a tough gig to get. You're very funny, your jokes are great, the structure's good, there's a lot of misdirection. What's your writing process like? Um... Sometime tonight. I, I, I don't know. I just, uh, you know, lie in, lie in bed. They come to me, I guess. I don't I'm, really I'm, write. I'm, I'm noticing that your writing started right when Texas made Pornhub illegal. <laughs> Is there any truth to you replacing your porn addiction with a love for stand-up comedy? I uh, actually don't uh, watch porn. Actually. Wow. Prove it. Hold on. What do you, how, no, what's your process there, then? Uh, Ima imagination? What are yeah, you, fucking Willy Wonka? Very, what's going uh, on over here? Very vivid imagination. Okay. What do you picture when you are pleasing yourself? Good question, Tony. Now I'm the pedophile somehow. I don't know how the switch happened. I'm just trying to host a show, but I made it creepy. I'm a big fan of uh, prostitutes. Some of those oh. jokes are true. Oh my oh, goodness shit. gracious, look at you. Oh, yeah. He didn't even smile after he said that. That is amazing, a 21 year old into the imaginary thoughts of a prostitute. Just the thought of a woman charging money yeah. is enough to get him off. Ian Edwards? Now, now when you say prostitutes, you mean killing them or fucking them? Good question, Ian. Or both. Both, of course. Both. Yeah, Both. absolutely amazing, Jerry is, Carlin. Is there now? I've you know I've done a little bit of uh, walking the streets late at night to make some extra cash, right? A woman of the night. Oh yeah, it's a it's a tough gig, but there's you know you have to make sure your price points are fair. So what, what what I guess what would be if I would uh you know if I showed you my menu of sexual favors, what would what's too much, right? Like for anal, how much would you pay? Uh, how much would I pay for anal? Yes. I think that's what I just fucking asked. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Some really tough interviews so far tonight. It is... I would say uh, under, under 50. What? Whoa, you dirty little boy. <laughs> Holy shit. Gus, she's she, freaking out about that. She was so offended by that price. She's and she's right. That is... And she's right. Our buttholes are precious, right? Uh, now, did you mean 50 cents or $50? Cents. <laughs> cents. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Stick with me here, Jerry. How much for a blowjob on this menu of... Uh, oh, that's easy. Five. Five dollars. Five dollar blowjob. <laughs> this is incredible. You sweet... Are you a virgin? No, no, no. Prove it. <laughs> that is the craziest yes I've ever heard in my life. 
Yeah, I, I think you are. I, just, I need to, okay, so let's say you and I are in the bedroom. What sort of noises do you make? Ready? Oh, uh, I'm silent. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of We All Knew That Already. Okay, Jerry, you're 21. How are you making money out there on these wild uh, streets? DoorDash, Uber Eats. Okay, just driving around. I love it. What kind of car do you have? Uh, Hyundai Elantra. What's your license plate? Uh, okay. <laughs> um, I love it. What's your living situation? You still with your parents? Yeah, still with my parents. Are they, they live here in Austin? Yeah. Okay, so born and raised in Austin. When did you decide or think that you wanted to maybe perhaps try stand-up comedy? When did this all start? Uh, I didn't even uh, discover comedy until after 18, but just uh, watching it. Did your parents keep you kind of away from things on No, I just never stumbled across it, I guess. What were you doing, playing video games or something? No, like? I hate video games. Okay, what were you doing? Uh, I'm a huge TV fan. I don't talk to people. Ooh, this guy might be a true comedian we're finding here. <laughs> this is incredible. You do, but for somebody who doesn't talk to me, you have a nice, like, you, you have an, an air to the, the way you, you're like, I don't talk to people. Like, you sound like you own a boat, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you're a very confident guy for not having a lot of social interaction. What is oh, that I'm called? having a panic attack. Oh, right now? <laughs> <laughs> that was the funniest thing I've heard tonight. Much more honest and giving than Lino Rodriguez's interview. He's actually being present, talking about how he feels in the moment. This is incredible. I love it. There's a, there's a fucking real comedian back here, Jerry Carlin. What do your parents think about? Do they know that you're out here? Do you yeah, comedy? yeah. They're pretty supportive of me, sure. Yeah. We don't, we've never really brought it up and talked about it. Right. Interesting. You don't talk to your parents either. You don't talk to anybody. You, you, Ian Edwards. You, you can't talk to parents you murdered. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this whole not talking to anybody thing, uh, has this always been a thing of yours? Uh, no, just, um, you know, out of high school, it's just hard to, to meet new people. Mm -hmm. After COVID, I kind of drifted apart from a lot of my friends. I only really have two, two good friends. Uh huh. What do you do with these two friends? Uh, just, we really don't even meet up that much, just talk, where do you Where do you talk? Uh, you know, messages. Wow. So you're a chat room guy? Sure. So Jerry, if you're at the dinner table with your parents, and you don't want to talk, but they're trying to strike up conversation, like, so Jerry, fuck any cool whores lately? <laughs> you just sit there in silence and eat your meatloaf? Oh, um, I don't eat dinner with them. You don't eat dinner with your parents. This is a fucking amazing fucking thing we have going on here. What do you eat? You eat by yourself? Yeah, pretty much. You every take meal. it up to your bedroom? Yeah. And you sit on the edge of the bed with like a TV tray or do you have a desk? No, I got this massive TV and a nice recliner. You sit in a recliner and you continue to watch TV. Mhm. Mm and you eat your food kind of like on your on your lap. That was a weird question, Tony. <laughs> no. I like to paint the picture for people. No, this okay, is all very it. frightening. You're right. It is. It's scary. I'm scared to death well, right now. I am now. too. I'm more scared than he is right now, and I've been doing this for 11 years, but this kid doesn't talk to anybody. His okay. whole life is just a bunch of blue bubbles of messages. <laughs> Can I ask a question? What would it take for you to interact with your parents? If Joe Rogan came down here tonight <laughs> and said, let's go to your house and eat dinner with your family, would you do it? Uh, if Joe Rogan asked, I would, yes. Okay, oh, okay. Well, we have exciting news for you. <laughs> Somebody said bow and arrow three times, and Joe Rogan is here, and he wants to have dinner with your man. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm just really worried for white kids, man. <laughs> this like, is like, the future. What the fuck is going on with white kids? Yep. You're right. It's a perfectly good-looking white young male and you're staying home, not talking to anybody. I used to be very ugly. What well, happened? Get, well, get over it. Uh, it was a, it's a drug called Accutane. I had terrible acne. Oh my you, goodness. It's worse. You got fucking perfect skin now. Yeah, yeah. Go talk to women. Uh, I should, yes. Yeah, you should, man. Wow. Well, uh... Welcome to the uh, welcome to the universe, Jerry Carlin. You're, not only are you out in public, but uh, you're thriving. You're out here. You Great job. It. Keep at it. Finally, found some people you can Believe talk to. Yourself. Thank you. Keep at it. Right that way. Great job, Jerry Great Carlin, job. ladies and gentlemen. 
And just the way that the fucking thing worked out tonight, we actually get a little blast from the past. For those of you curious of what Jerry Carlin looked like very recently, we have a golden ticket winner here that is ready to blast off with a brand new minute. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, sensation. You know him, you love him, make some noise. This is a rare appearance by the great and powerful Heath Cordes, everybody. Jerry needs to start doing hard drugs. Uh, just got out of my first, like, uh, real toxic relationship. Come on. Woo! Yeah, it was great at first, but then it just got really needy, and I needed space, so, like, uh, I couldn't see her anymore. And that's why I said I hate to do this, but if you leave me, I'll kill your family. <laughs> burn your house down, shoot my brains out, I don't give a fuck, I'm an emotional wreck right now. <laughs> Try me. Now I legally can't see her anymore. <laughs> it's all right, I'm gonna fuck the shit out of Elaine tonight, woo! <laughs> That's the end of my minute, thank you guys, woo! 50 seconds from Heath Cordes. I love it. 50 seconds. You'll only need 22 with me, sweetheart. Yeah, <laughs> Save right. that 30 for a rainy day. Uh -huh. you. you know it. Wink, wink. wink, this wink show, fuck, fuck. So far, <laughs> this show is a pedophile's delight. <laughs> <laughs> this is incredible. We had a 21-year-old that said, I just recently got lo good looking <laughs> just a moment ago. And uh, here you are. Another 21-year-old, back-to-back. Mm -hmm. um, and, but uh, not really 21. That's just what I had to say to, like, get this going. Wait, what do you mean? Yeah, you fucked up. You, uh, you, uh, <laughs> you didn't do enough background. <laughs> I checked your ID that night that we met. It's a good ID. Oh, my God. You little son of a bitch. <laughs> so how old are you really? Uh, I'll never tell. Oh, hell yeah. Why am I hard? Okay. <laughs> um, Heath, let's get into it. You're yes, a golden ticket winner here on Kill Tony. How's yeah. life been going? How has your life changed? What's going on with you? Pretty good. Uh, I'm very happy. I got a door guy job at the mothership, so that's... Congratulations. Yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah, that's how Huge. I've been spending my time, just trying to get better. It's that's good to right, know security is real tight around here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I laugh every time I see them pat someone down because I'm just like, what? what? Right. Okay. It's ironic you're the golden ticket winner, Heath. You look like Charlie Bucket with autism. Mm hmm Yeah. And this All right. show yeah. is Willy Wonka with autism, so. You gotta cool. stop smoking, yeah. kid. Do you smoke? What, do you, what kind of drugs do you do, Heath? All of them. Because you told Heath is a wild boy. Yeah. I will tell you that yeah. he is one of the uh, lightest people yet heaviest drinkers here at the mothership. Um, yeah. He actually, uh, you got shit faced last last Thursday. And yeah, he you missed your flight. He fucked up. <laughs> I fucked up. You fu who, who's fucking up now, huh? Me, I fucked up. You did. <laughs> yeah. And he, uh, I was going to take him to do sold out theaters in Boston and Baltimore, and he slept. Yeah through his flights yeah. to the point to where a little, me. a little fun fact is, uh, you know, we were on the plane and, and it's about to close up here in Austin, Texas. And <clears throat> they came over the loudspeaker and said, if there's a Heath Cordes, please uh, ring your <laughs> uh, ringer. And so, of course, I messaged the, the whole fucking crew. I go, is Heath? And has anyone seen Heath? No. I messaged you, right? Mm -hmm. And I did not get a response until... After we landed in Boston, so Tony, everyone. I'm so sorry, please. It, I'm so sorry. That's what I said. That's right. Via mm -hmm. text message. Via text right. message. Right. So it didn't really translate. No, but that's how I felt. Of course, yeah. I do believe that. But just just to take you guys there, I was about 85 percent sure when we landed in Boston and heard nothing back. That is when we went to the next level of who are his roommates, can we reach out to them? Because we thought he was dead, everybody. We literally thought that your condition, fucking whatever's wrong with you, uh, 
went into overdrive and fucking it was so, like so who so at least three more months. So he who who woke you up out of your race car bed? Who told you that? <laughs> yeah. Who told you it was time to perform? Worst way to wake up. No one woke me up out of the race car bed, and I was still late. He just woke up. That's the plot yeah. of Home Alone, pretty much. Yeah. Right? <laughs> mm-hmm. So did you go Bonanza City? Did you have pizza and ice cream and watch old oh, movies? Oh yeah, you yeah. gotta yeah. Really, it is the ultimate uh, lesson in life. You mm-hmm. dealt with it. Very, very well. You're still alive. I had to go super, super easy to make sure I did not induce a suicide. Um, really close. I did real good with it, right? Yeah, you did great. It was very, very, very yeah. nice. Just Tony's not making anyone kill themselves. Thank despite. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is the People might episode hate. where we clear the air about me yeah. inducing suicides, which is, a, which is out there in the zeitgeist somewhere if you look hard enough for it. But if anybody would have killed themselves, it's the sweet little boy mm-hmm. with many conditions. Scoliosis, Benjamin Buttons, whatever the fuck you have. You got it all. What if he's like that movie Jack with Robin Williams and he's 65? How old, so you said four, you're really not 21, Heath. I'll never tell. Okay. okay. Now, what if Joe Rogan came down here and asked you what your age was? <laughs> yeah, he knows. Okay, he knows. okay yeah. fair enough. You said 65, which made me think of something. Have you ever 69 with anyone, Heath? Have you ever it's got, impossible. Got, have you ever gotten your dick sucked while... It's impossible. <laughs> All right. Well, with that They attitude. have to, like, hunch down like this, you know, just, like, make it work logistically. Yeah. Every time I look at Heath, I feel like some ventriloquist is like, where did my puppet go? <laughs> <laughs> it is incredible, Heath. Has your size uh, ever helped you with anything? Is there ever a time where uh, you use it to your advantage? A lot of leg space on the pl- flights that you've been missing. Yeah, it's what's crazy <laughs> is I still get really claustrophobic on planes. You do? Yeah, even even though I have the best situation yeah. for planes, I still hate them. Yeah. Do you get to board first? The what? <laughs> <laughs> no. You don't? I should. So I should get the board first. It's not fair. They don't go paging all passengers with Asperger's. It's your turn. Yeah. I don't know if it's Have Asperger's. I think he has ass sliders. It's a little bit smaller than a mm. burger. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Stupid. That's funny. Thank That's you. That's a food joke. Thank you, Elaine. <laughs> That's a food joke. Thank you. This motherfucker doesn't board at all. Yeah. Stays it at is home. incredible. I got to stop uh, hiring openers that sleep in cribs and can't get out in the morning. Very rare. You are the first person I do believe I've ever worked with that slept in on flights. But you know what? At the end of the day, you doing it, kind of adorable. Um, that's good. Had it been so Cam Patterson, you. there may have been some racial slurs said or something <laughs> like that with you. It's just like, oh, I hope he doesn't hurt himself. <laughs> That's what I go for. So what did you end up doing that weekend? Anything fun? Not really. Just being sad. Right. Yeah. Uh, Token. That guy, he reached out to me, and he said he wanted to hang out. So I was that, like, it was the rapper who went to the show. Token. Yeah, we put that together. Yeah, his name's Token. I, Who's I don't, Token? Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, the, he was there. He met you. Um, in Boston. That's in Boston, right. Yep. Yeah. 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 We met a rapper in Boston. Mm-hmm. I found out afterwards that he was a rapper. I just thought he was some fucking quiet kid hanging yeah. out. Yeah. I was boy. listening to him since like high school. So like that just rubbed the salt. Okay. In the wow. Wound Three or four years. It. Wow. Oh, yeah. Long ago, was <laughs> yeah. I just did that. Yep. Um, okay. Well, Heath. Um, are you we, a big gangster rap guy? Mm-hmm. I try to be. Uh oh. Why are you asking that question? I don't know. Elaine. I just felt like it might be time for a rap battle. Yeah. No, no. Elaine. No, no. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Who, you're going to have him rap? Newsflash, you're... this ain't Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like if you're a fan of rap at some point, if you have time no. off and you missed a flight, you I'm would... such a fan of rap that I'm not going to rap on stage right oh, now. Okay, well, yeah. you could have just... Good move, good move. Thank you. Great move. Yeah. Okay, if it's coming from the black guy, it probably is a good yeah, move. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great move. Well, Heath, another fun 50 seconds. You, you, you know, writing is not easy, and you wait. You use your golden ticket wisely and only come in when you're ready for it, and I love it. And you, Thank you. You're, you're a very promising young uh, buck. Congratulations. 21-year-old Heath Cordes, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you tonight, Heath. No condoms necessary. Way to fuck up, dude. Celia!
Oh my goodness, thank you so much. I need that. All right, pulled another name out of the bucket. Here we go, 60 seconds uninterrupted from Andrew Ginsberg. Here comes Andrew Ginsberg, everybody. Here he is. Come on, make some noise for Andrew, everyone. Yeah, I got called for jury duty last week. I've had to do that in a while. I was a little nervous. I uh, haven't had to do it in a bit. Don't know anything about the justice system. I've seen uh, 895 episodes of Judge Judy, but that's it, so I didn't know what to expect. You know what I mean? But my friends told me, don't worry, there's a really long orientation before they start, so they'll teach you everything you need to know about sending somebody to jail. But they didn't tell us anything about that. For 30 minutes, the lady behind the counter, all she told us about was how to fill out the address section of the juror form the whole time I was there. The whole time she was just like, if you live in a house, you're not gonna put an apartment number on the form. You live in a house. Sir, why are you putting an apartment number on the form? You live in a house. This went on for 30 fucking minutes, you know? And I'm saying to myself, why are they telling us about this instead of anything about the, the justice system? Why are they telling us about this address form? And it dawned on me. The other people in my group, they couldn't fill out the address form. They were struggling with it. It just got me thinking, like, these are your peers. This is the jury. If you commit a crime, these fucking people are going to sentence you to prison. They can't even fill out the fucking address form. There's a lady in my group in a Klondike bar at 9.30 in the morning. Are you fucking kidding me? If you, if you eat ice cream before lunch, you're not qualified to send somebody to prison. I'm sorry. That's how I feel about that, you know? Started taking my anger out on the judge. I was like, dude, you've studied law for what, 20 years? You need help from 30 random fucking weirdos to help you make a decision? Get it together. Use your brain. You're a lawyer. It's like if I went to the doctor and he was like, I think you have cancer. Good Lord almighty, Andrew. Jesus Christ. Holy shit. Well, here's someone who's not going to get a titty fuck. <laughs> oh, my God. What the fuck was that? Hi, Andrew. Hey, how you doing? How Tony? long have you been doing stand-up for? Six years. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sorry. It's a... What was that? Is that? Well, I'll tell you the truth. Yeah, please do. I, uh, I have a tight set, but I, I, my friends are saying if you got on the show to do something that you're excited about, that's new, and it just didn't translate. Oh, here. wow, your friends fucked you. <laughs> yeah. Your friends hate you, Andrew Ginsburg. Yeah, they sure do. Why don't you give us an example? Six years in the game. Why don't you do your best joke? Okay. Yep. Um... I just turned 35 recently. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Now I'm hanging out with all 25 year olds now. I, uh, you know, I realized, uh, you know, all my real friends got married and moved to the suburbs and had kids, so I had to regroup. Now I'm hanging out with 25 year olds, you know. Oh shit. No, 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 no. no. I'm not done. <laughs> oh shit. Maybe I will give you that titty fuck. Oh shit. <laughs> I'm just nervous. You live in New York? Yeah. You know how I know? Yeah. You do that. <laughs> New Yorkers do that, and they do this. Something to keep an eye on. They can't <laughs> fucking help them. <laughs> I, Another thing is, <laughs> it's fucking terrible. You make up for a lack of everything with all this fucking. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I, you can't right. help yourself. Just bombing and fucking moving the mic. Hey, you can't tell I'm bombing. Look over here. <laughs> fucking New York tricks. Ian, am I correct? You've seen this before, yeah, I've right? I've seen that before. Yeah. Listen, man, the only where you can save the rest of your time up here yeah. is if your dad got killed by a bunch of <laughs> baseball bats. <laughs> He's not wrong. Fair enough. And if you caught your girlfriend cheating, you better have some tragedy. Yeah. <laughs> Ginsburg, we got to get into it. You got to save this with an interview, dude. Look, he's doing the double hand thing, doesn't even know it. Ha, ha. I could go on and on, people. Yeah. I've, I study this art form. I've known it. By the way, Shane and Atel do the double hand thing, but they can get away with it. It's their thing. That's why the rest of them are doing it. Anyway, yes. just got to get that disclaimer out there before everybody fucking loses their minds. Um, you suck. Let's get into it. Uh, six years, your new minute sucks, your best joke sucks. Well, I, I tripped on that. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm so nervous. Okay. Apologies don't work here, but it's yeah. okay. Uh, so uh, tell us what, what's like good stuff that's happening from you doing stand-up comedy. Why do you continue to do this to yourself? Well, normally I get laughs. I know that seems unbelievable right now in this Ooh, particular let moment. Me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you something, because I mentioned this earlier. It's a hot crowd. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe the stuff that I've heard them laugh at tonight. <laughs> I know. But I was I normally honestly do get proud laughs. of them at staying solid for your wretched <laughs> set because I'm like, wow, normally they laugh on cadence alone, kind of, like where there should be a laugh, but they fuck. <laughs> they kept it real on this one. They realized, like, oh shit, 
We're yeah. going to watch an actual bombing here today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have rather you queefed into the microphone Me than too. told any actual <laughs> yeah. jokes. Me too. If you could now, do that, that would be amazing. If you could do that. But, but you are, but and nerves is a part of it, right? I'm nervous. I don't uh, feel that great, to be honest with you. Okay. Why don't well, you, hold, on, hold on. I'm sorry to interrupt, Elaine. <laughs> Why don't you feel great? Gotcha. Well, to be honest with you, Tony, the pollen in Austin is killing me, and I'm just dying. Oh, you fucking faggot. <laughs> I'll feel I don't that great. Hear it. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Oh, my God. It's just take, the truth. Oh take God. some clarity, you fucking Jew. <laughs> I could say that I went to a bar mitzvah 20 years ago. Oh, I believe you. Oh, oh this is my the truth. God. Bro, why would you say that shit? <laughs> It's the truth. Are you from New York? What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm from Jersey. <laughs> oh, what, do, what do you mean you're from Jersey? But you, you live in New York. I live in New York. Right. So you're originally from, you're trying to like claim Jersey all of a sudden? No, no, I'm just saying that's where I'm from. I don't, I don't. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, all I, right. I, I actually, so I actually kind of get like the type of comedy he was trying to do. Sure. It didn't hit. So I, I understand, like I can see where that would work. Sure. But if I ever hear you tell some niggas about your pollen allergies. <laughs> Understood. Ever again, like everybody that booed, you were on fucking point. Yeah, it is, it is something else. Sure. Uh, the pollen has gotten the best of you. When did you arrive here to Austin, Texas, a place that naturally is pushing you away? <laughs> Thursday night. Thursday night, yeah. and the pollen just started flying up in your nostrils, and yeah. you're like, oy vey. <laughs> Uh, pretty much. I mean, that's... A, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, you have to rise above it. You know, there's going to be other hardships that come your way, right? <laughs> I, I'll, I'll take like, that as a note. <laughs> Joe Rogan fights through pollen. <laughs> I'm sure, sure he does. That's true. I, I, I'm I sure like he does. That, I like that nature tried to stop this set. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Texas has a way of, uh, of uh, keeping a certain type of people up in New York. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> Do your allergies affect you in other places? We do have we do have allergies here. People yeah, just, people get them. Just the the weak people. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just Texas. No, they affect me other places. Right. Yeah. yeah. Tell us some more super Jewy things about you. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm only I'm only half Jewish. My mom's Italian. Oh yeah. wow, you know those Italians and their allergies. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, so I'm not all the way. All right. Well, yeah. the, okay. Yeah, I want to just tell you the truth about that too. Oh, you always say, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to be honest here, Tony. I'm going to tell you the truth. Yeah. You're a fucking, you're a little liar, aren't you? <laughs> no, not about this. <laughs> now, riddle me this. Yes. Uh, Ginsburg's your last name. What's your first name? Andrew. Andrew, if you were to tell a lie that was funnier than the truth, yeah. like, what would it, your excuse was not pollen. What, what could you come up with that might be funny to say <laughs> instead of I'm allergic to fucking flowers? Yeah, I was doing meth till 9.30 in the morning. I'm sorry, you know? <laughs> Mm. All right. Well, we <laughs> I'll tell you the truth, Elaine. I, uh, I'm allergic to uh, Palestine. <laughs> that's true. That's funny. That is. All right. Now, well, how do you write? Do you write? Uh, do you, Do you write? I do write. Yes. Okay. Yeah. In yeah, an I unfunny I chamber. <laughs> I mean, you know, I write as much as I can. I Give us up. your second best joke. I want to hear your second best joke. We Please. went through the 35, 25. You're up here for a reason. We still think Six there's something in. So years deep, deep. in the game. Right. Let's hear your second right, best right. joke. Let's say you were take a deep breath this first. Um, all right. I appreciate it. Yeah, well, that's just going to put more pollen in his nasal <laughs> passage. <laughs> We're going to give you a fucking, what's that shot? We're going to give you an epinephrine or something. All right. Okay, I'll, here we go. I'll His second truth. best joke, six years. Oh, I'll tell you the truth. Here he goes. I'm going to be uh, honest. I just found out that my cat has diabetes. Ah. Which is strange. I never had a cat before. It's kind of like having a girlfriend again. I just fall around my apartment saying I'm sorry and wondering why she hates me so much. You know, it turns into the same thing. But I came home the other day and she was in the corner of my apartment. She's peeing and she's crying. And I'm like, first of all, this is New York. Pay rent. That's my corner for peeing and crying, you know. Then I took her to the vet, and the vet said she has diabetes. I'm like, how does a cat get diabetes? All my friends are like, what are you feeding your cat? Like, I'm giving the cat cat food, dude. My cat can't speak. I don't know my cat's in pain, you know? My mom has diabetes, and that makes more sense because I call her every Sunday, and I'm like, Mom, what are you making for dinner? And she's like, I'm having a nice, healthy cake. I'm like, okay, get why you have diabetes. That makes sense, you know? My cat doesn't walk around. <laughs> Seinfeld. <laughs> that was Kramer. 
What the fuck was that? Oh my god. This is an anomaly. <laughs> I love the commitment though. Yeah. My cat got diabetes. I promise I'm not got crazy. Diabetes. Everybody's got diabetes. <laughs> Do you say I promise I'm not crazy? Yeah. Well, that's how you should open the whole set. <laughs> yeah. I will. That's funny. Time. That's honest. Yeah. You are a little crazy, though, huh? I guess so. Tell us something real and crazy about you that would surprise us. Give us something from your Italian side. You ever do anything <laughs> exciting or uh, anything at all? Really? Anything other than complainy, whiny, unfunny bullshit? <laughs> That this hurts, is the Tony. show you signed up for. No, I understand. Uh, I know. Okay, yeah. let's go. What's, a, what's something that would surprise us about you, Ginsburg? I don't know if you'd find it surprising, but I've been asked to officiate six weddings. <laughs> yeah. I, I could believe that. Yeah. yeah. It's not surprising at all. Yeah. So. Seems like that's what you would be good at. Thank you, a Very <laughs> serious speaking role. <laughs> <laughs> like in the real world or like on Sims? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the real world? The real world. I, I, I still can't get over, like, you saw a guy that was 21 years old that is, like, suffering with some shit. Do, do his material. Another guy, his dad died. And then you're like, I have a pollen. <laughs> you, you, you know no, how much right. damage was up here? <laughs> He's right. You think you've ever killed before six years in the game? Have you ever I, killed? I, I promise I do. You promise you do? I have, yeah. You have. I, I go up every day. You go up every day. Yeah. And that's what you did. You have a third no, best just, joke that I might hit here? <laughs> <laughs> Who wants theirs? I know. I know. We're 11 minutes into this, guy. People are going to be like, well, how did you keep them up here? I don't care. I want to hear your third best joke. <laughs> If cat has diabetes is number two, and I'm 35 hanging out with 25 well, is number one. No, it's not number one. I didn't. Because you gotta have. I a didn't killer. finish that. I, 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 I'm just. Uh, okay, nervous. let's. Yeah. Talk, the third best joke, ladies and gentlemen. Here he is. Try to think of one that maybe has like a short setup and a big punch. Okay. Here we go, Andrew Ginsberg. <laughs> Six years of New York comedy, supposedly the comedy capital of the world. And here is Andrew Ginsberg, six New years Jersey. into New, being a New York comedian. New Jersey, New Jersey. No, 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 no. No, he's been doing it in New York, originally from New Jersey. But here he is, New York comedian, everybody. Andrew Ginsberg. Yeah, we already did this. Go ahead into it. Um... Well, I'll be honest. Okay, go ahead. I was saying to my friends, I feel like I'm like a raging alcoholic. You know what I mean? They're like, ah, oh, don't make you say that, Ginsburg. You're not partying that hard. I'm like, I don't know. If you wake up every single big night, you're Googling, am I an alcoholic? You're definitely an alcoholic, right? I feel like most people don't do that. They're not like, should you have shit in a blender last night? Do people do that? What's the third result say on this Google search, you know? But uh, I'm trying to roll. That's not fair. <laughs> This is fucking amazing. Oh, this is amazing. Ginsburg, let me ask you something. I've noticed, and at first I thought there was no way that it was really happening, but I've noticed that you do this thing. You know what you do? No, sir. This thing where you kind of fucking, and then I, you know, and then a ba ba da ba, and then a da 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 da. You know, have you noticed that you do that? Yeah. What is that? That's some Jersey shit. Some Jersey shit. <laughs> Again, no, he's a New York comedian. I want those New York comics no. to see one of their own out here just fucking. You're on lineups out there, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, up there with everybody else. This is what's going on in New York comedy right now, right? It's not my best night. It's not my best night. That is one of the funniest things you've said in 13 and a half minutes. Holy shit. We got to get you out of here, dude. Yeah, all right. You tried, you, you tried your best, though, right? You feel good? No, I don't. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's a little bit of honesty in the moment. A little joke book. That's there true. he goes. Andrew Ginsberg, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. There he goes. Wow. Wow. That is what this show is all about right there. Sometimes you're watching the future. And sometimes you're watching the past in real time. Anything can happen. <laughs>
What's up, horseheads? The Kentucky Derby is returning to Churchill Downs for an unforgettable day at the races. That's right. In celebration of the 150th race, your boys have teamed up with DraftKings to bring you the ultimate derby experience. Right now, they are offering new customers who sign up through our special tiny litty bitty link and use promo code KTDERBY, a 100% deposit bonus up to $250 when you deposit a minimum of $25. Oh, Red Band. That's absolutely right, Tony. DraftKings is matching your deposit dollar for dollar up to $250. $150 when you deposit $25 or more. Ah, that's incredible, Red Band. I can't wait to bet my hard-earned cash on the ponies. Already a DraftKings player? where well, you can use your same login to start betting on the races now. There's no need to waste time making an account, so get ready to saddle up this race season. Download the number one ranked horse betting app in America using the link down below, and make sure to sign up with our promo code KTDERBY. The winner's circle awaits. Hey, y'all, this podcast is sponsored by Liquid Death. There are two things I love in this world, liquid and death. And you know what kind of liquid I like, water. You've seen the cans before to the naked eye. It may look like a beer or some crazy energy drink, but of course it's not. It is delicious water. Maybe you've noticed a coworker cracking a tall boy in your 9 a.m. meeting and you thought they were a dirty alcoholic. Well, you were wrong because they were drinking Liquid Death. Liquid Death is actually a healthy beverage brand that makes mountain spring water, low sugar sodas, and low sugar iced teas too. I bet you're wondering why a health beverage would be called Liquid Death. Who knows better than that than Red Man? Well, Tony, that's because Liquid Death will brutally murder your thirst and their infinitely recyclable <laughs> cans are helping to bring death to single-use plastic bottles. Liquid Death also also donates a portion of profits from every can sold to help kill plastic pollution. Well put, Red Band. My favorite flavor is Convicted Melon, and I drink it every time. I need a cold, refreshing beverage. It's also super fun to drink in public because people think it's a beer, and beer makes you look cool, and I like looking cool. But you know what else is cool? Staying hydrated. Get free shipping of Liquid Death's Mountain Waters flavored sparkling and iced tea eight packs with Amazon Prime, or grab a can or a case at your local 7-Eleven, Target, Walmart, or Whole Foods. God, it's a lot of options to get things. Go to liquiddeath.com slash Tony to check out all their healthy, infinitely recyclable beverages and find your closest retailer. That's liquiddeath.com slash Tony. Liquiddeath.com slash Tony. Put your hands together. Another bucket pull. 60 seconds uninterrupted for Matt Sturm, everybody. Here we go. Matt Sturm. Hey, guys. Fuck. How's it going? I'm getting a little fat. Uh, you're not fat. Why are you laughing, man? You're a little fat. You are, you piece of... No, you're a good guy. Uh, I'm getting a little fat, guys. Uh, I was with a girl recently. She tried to titty fuck me. Yeah, you ever have that happen to you? She was starting to milk me like a fucking ravaging beast. She was fucking pulling my tits and shit. Uh, I'm Matt, by the way. Uh, I'm German and Jewish, so I want to kill myself. You know? Uh... Yeah, it's not a joke. Uh, what else, guys? Fuck, man. Uh, Passion of the Christ 2 came out quick. Uh, I can do this fast. Passion of the Christ 2 came out quickly. Mel Gibson announced it. It's a good time for him to hate Jews, right? Fuck. You can laugh. I just said I'm Jer uh, Jewish. It's okay. How do you guys feel about Hamas? You like Hamas? No? Oof. You don't like it, huh? Uh, what? I can't... I, what did you say? Oh, that's it. Wow. Wow. All right. <laughs> looks like the, it looks like Ginsburg cursed the show. Yeah, I know. All right, Matt yeah. Sturm, relax, relax. Take oh. a breath for oh. a moment. In I'm fat, so I can't fucking breathe, man. Okay, Matt, relax. Relax. Thanks, How long have you been on stand-up? Uh, just about a little longer than Ginsburg. <laughs> Okay, why don't you tell us how long you've been doing stand-up, Matt? Oh, about eight years, Eight Tony. years, where yeah. at? Where at? Uh, well, it was, it's been hard because I'm from uh, Vermont originally. I uh -huh. uh, live in Connecticut, the dreaded Connecticut. So uh, I would have to take a train in New York, uh, do a bunch of New Another York Another New stadium. York comedian, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Ah! Wow. Ah! Oh, that's, does that work there? <laughs> no. Okay. Least, you know, Listen, yeah. man, I'm, I'm yeah. from New York. These niggas is not from New York. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I'm from New England. <laughs> you look hot. <laughs> no, you're a comedy store guy, Ian. Did you start in New York? Yeah, I started in New York. Yeah. Yeah, and I did like the Boston, the, the right. cellar. Yeah. And then I moved to LA and I'm a store guy. So I'm a both. I'm a you're LA a comedy. true store guy, though. I mean, I've known yeah, yeah. you there 
every week for 17 years, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah you're yeah. one of the greats, Ian. I've never seen you ask a random crowd member when you're bombing, hey, uh, you into Hamas? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This guy got thrown Nobody. off by everything, Nobody by the way. Nobody in got... New York would do that shit. It's a good question. That's not a bad question. Now, I don't know if the answer, but... Well, you, you look like you, you drive Uber. Do you drive Uber? Oh, I've been in an Uber. Okay, uh, it's a start. I what do you like do to. for work? Uh, I'm looking for work. I don't have a job. What was your last job? Uh, I worked at a restaurant. I was a waiter. Okay. How yeah. long did you do that for? Oh, uh, fucking 10 years. How man. recently did you lose that job? Uh, about a six months, man. Okay. So how do you have enough money to survive six months? Uh, I was in my mom's basement. I, I wasn't doing shit, man. So I came down here. Uh, how long have you, you know? been here? I've been here about, you know, uh, a little more than a month, I How's think. How's it going? I love it. I'm having a fucking blast, What man. are you doing for fun here that you're having such a blast? Uh, I'm just going to all, all sorts of mics and shows and having a good time, being around other awesome comics that are really nice. The scene's really tight-knit. There's a lot of cool guys around here that are super nice. So. Wow, what uh, an adorable answer. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, what's your... Uh, what do you do for fun? Anything other than stand-up comedy? Oh, you know, Tony, sometimes I just take a long fucking look at the river, and I think about the, uh, you know, that Lady Bird... that you've been murdering there? Yeah, well, the Lady Bird Lake Killer still is at rise. You know, we don't know who it is, but there's some, uh, there's some rumors. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me do it again, Red Man. <laughs> Is Ginsburg staying with you while he's out here? No, no, no. I met him tonight, but oh, we're okay. you from the You sure? Uh, uh, well, I recognized him You're from New York. You're both half Jewish. Yes. From the East Coast. Well, only a few of us survived that thing that uh, oh. happened. Topical. Uh-oh. Um, uh -oh. So let's talk about it here, Matt. Um, you do recognize Ginsburg from New York's comedy scene. I've seen his face for sure. Let's we talked. Let's do a fun we... thing. Yeah. Since uh, we had him try this, why don't we hear your best joke. You didn't do it tonight. You were, you were saying what else oh, at yeah. 35 seconds. I, so let's 35. do a little fun thing. Oh, yeah. A little New York edition of your best joke. Eight years as a stand-up comedian. Grinding and grueling. Taking a train, am I correct, from Connecticut to New York City? Yep. Grinding and grueling. Slinging my fucking good-ass jokes. Okay, here you are. Your best joke, ladies and oh, gentlemen, yeah. Matt Sturm, and go. I'm gay. Oh, crickets. No. Oh, Okay. My best joke. I don't do. I'm bad at one-liners, Tony. Do a good one. Okay, hell yeah, man. Uh, fuck. I, on the spot, just do. No, and no, not oh, the right written. one. Do Matt, 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 Matt. Don't make more noises into the microphone. It's not helping you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just listen. Oh, Wait. Yeah. So when you were working oh, at the geez. restaurant, if yeah. they were like, "Hey, how's the Caesar salad?" Will you just go, "I'm gay," and pull your shirt up? Yes. Yes. That's how I got my tips. Okay, so stick with me here. Yeah, 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 yeah. In eight years of stand-up, I'm not asking you to write a joke now. I'm oh, asking just you to do, do the best joke the best you've ever joke written. I've ever written. There you go. What's the best joke I've ever written? There he goes. Matt Stern, yeah, everybody. So, there you go. I don't know. There I don't goes. know what the best joke is. Bye-bye, Matt. There he goes. Very good. Blacklisted. Do not touch these people anymore. No more handshakes or high fives or anything, by the way. That's not a thing. Whew. Two New York comedians back to back, and now, Whoa. and now, it's Tony, and now, sorry, Ian. I don't. By the way, I don't know why you're claiming New York. This is he like said he's from Connecticut. Where they do stand up is what I'm counting here. He goes to New York, but it obviously is not. For I don't stand -up. care where they're fucking, where they sleep. There's it's no where way. they perform. These guys are on lineups in New York City. Anyway, your next comedian <laughs> uh, is a regular on this show. You're going to see 60 seconds uninterrupted from an Austin comedian that works here full time. Let's see what happens. This is a brand new minute. This guy has to do this every single week. This isn't... He's not reaching for a minute of the best stand-up that he's done in eight years. This is a brand new minute from the one and only Cam Patterson, everybody. <laughs> hey, them last niggas was terrible, dog. Uh, we was recently in Utah, uh, and usually when I go to a state, they usually got most white people. 
I, I look up on the internet what uh what side of the Civil War they was on. And because you have to to be safe as a black man, right? And Utah wasn't even a state when the Civil War was going on, but whoever the fuck was in Utah sided with the union. And that's cool, that's great, good team, I fuck with them, you know what I'm saying? I like that a lot. But I will tell you that the population in Utah of black people is 1.6. So even though they were like, we don't fuck with slavery, they also were like, we don't want you niggas over here neither. <laughs> Stay the fuck out of Utah, bitch. I will tell you, I like Utah because they got, they got mountains, dawg. And like, I, I never thought I was going to be able to see Mount, Mount Everest that close, you feel me? <laughs> What's so fucking funny, dawg? I'm from Florida. Every mountain to me is Mount Everest, bitch. I only know three mountains. Mount Everest, Mount Kilimanjaro, big word, and uh, <laughs> it's Splash Mountain, dumbass. <laughs> One minute. Nine <laughs> seconds Ooh, yeah. from a man Ooh, that has yeah. to write a new minute every week in front Ooh. of a million people, Ooh, yeah. Cam Patterson. Ooh. I don't know how this turned into a New York versus Austin <laughs> fucking Harlem Globetrotters game, but I love it. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> this is what we do, baby. Just a professional balling all over two white <laughs> nerds. <laughs> Them niggas was, hey, what, hey, the last nigga, the, the nigga that went before uh, Heath. Yeah. Uh, Jerry, y'all don't, y'all let that nigga go home? <laughs> what do you mean? He's a fucking serial killer, yeah. dog. Oh, I know. Nobody stop. I talk to nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody arrest this nigga, dog. He kills people. <laughs> he fucking murders people, man. It's fucked up how they wait to find the bodies. Yeah, it's yeah. like, we, he right here. He's right yeah. there. Just get him. Get him right now, yeah. man. He gets rid of the bodies. He not only does he seem like a murderer, but he also seems like the guy that knows the chemical compound uh, to put it in a barrel to put the body into the barrel for the body to disintegrate completely. I, I've, yeah. never, I've never seen anybody look more like a sniper, bro. Yeah, you yeah. kept asking. You was like, so do you? Who do you talk to? I don't talk to nobody. <laughs> what about your parents? What parents? <laughs> but that nigga terrified the fuck out of me, dog. I was in the back like, nobody sees this nigga? Nobody sees Jeffrey Dahmer reincarnated, nigga? That shit pissed me off, man. <laughs> okay, Cam, you've never, been, you've never talked to yourself late at night, just laying in bed, being like, look how great my big back cock is. You yeah. ever do that? You know... I you, talk to myself. I think everyone does you, it, but you're right. His is a little crazier. Remember the first time I met you? Yes. You do? Yes, it was Applebee's. No, you... No. <laughs> Oh, you came, you came to the Orlando Improv when I first started doing comedy and I asked you to do a guest spot. That's right. And you looked me dead in my face and said, eat my pussy, nigga. And I said, no, I don't want to do that. And yeah. then I didn't do that. You didn't do that. Well, yeah. the night is young, my friend. <laughs> I remember, too, I remember I said, what's your name? And you go, Cam. And I yep. go, what's the last name? You go, Patterson. I go, good. I just want to get it right when I tell the police. And it's good to see... <laughs> But you remind me of my old driver, Cam, so it's good to see you. <laughs> like driving Miss Daisy, nigga? I know that movie. I know that movie. Yeah, okay. It's a classic. Denzel was in it, nigga. Yeah. Wasn't he in it? Wasn't Denzel in that movie? Yeah, I think so, yeah. No, yeah. no it was Morgan no. Friedman. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> the white people got me, dog. I'm forgetting black people now. I'm fucking up. I'm fucking up. That looked really fun. You guys having a good time. That looked really fun. <laughs> yeah, you were crushing at the uh, Orlando Improv. That was good. And look at you now. You Come do, on, you're now. grinding. It's good for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm very proud of you. Working our asses off, I tell you. Feel good me? for you. You have to. I do feel you. Most you dope. crushed harder than, uh, than Leno's uh, dad with that bat. There's a joke there somewhere. But yeah, <laughs> you, uh, you're murdering tonight, is what I'm saying. Yeah, and I killed his dad. Okay. We can, <laughs> I don't know, we can I don't know why out. I said yeah. that. Take that out, please. Cam, you, you definitely, you don't waste your words is what I appreciate. Gang You're getting tighter with your jokes. Thank you. A very natural editor. It's very, very visible on these shows that, uh, that we're doing on the road in massive theaters. Cam has a brand new tour coming up. Hell Where yeah. are those tickets at? Uh, Cam So Funny, no, yeah, CamSoFunny.com. I pretty sure that's that it. What, yeah. Cam so, with one S, So Funny? Two O's, or two O's, two O's. Two O's. Cam, Cam, so funny. Oh God. Yeah. Bad idea, oh, that's man. a terrible idea. I made that. I made that do shit. You, when I was, do you hate selling tickets? <laughs> You'd be better with so it, like S E W. Well, somebody tell my dad that nigga. He don't know the difference. Oh, your dad that literally <laughs> can't spell. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. 
Your dad came up with your website that's name? That's a great We put two O's on he so He literally thought it. he was spelling it correctly. <laughs> this, is, this, is when, this is where having a father hurts you. <laughs> Cam, you're absolutely killing it. Thank you for Appreciate reminding it. everybody how good Appreciate a second be on this show. Great to see you, player. Two years in the game, by the way. Cam Patterson. Two years. So, you see what's going on. Hey, y'all. This podcast is sponsored by Mood. You know, Red Band, I'm going to celebrate 420 this year by doing a show at the Comedy Mothership with the great Joe Rogan and some very special guests who we all know. But, most importantly, I'm going to vibe out with some Mood products Browse by different moods and get 20% off your first order and a free THCA pre-roll with promo code KILLTONY at hellomood.com. Red band. Tony, I-L-O-V-E, some THC. You sure do. And some KFC, too, by the looks of things. Come on. The mood products are fantastic. I love their vapes and gummies the most. They make me feel nice and relaxed when I'm hanging out with all my friend <laughs> what I love even more is how quickly it was delivered. Introducing THCA Flower, Mood's latest and most potent breakthrough in the world of legal cannabis. When you heat THCA, it changes into THC, and that's what causes the classic high feeling. And Mood has 10 high-inducing strains, the most potent they've ever offered. There are different strains for specific moods, from euphoric to energized, creative to chill, and plenty of versatile products that go with whatever mood you're going for. Celebrate 420 exactly how you want with Mood. Get 20% off your first order plus a free THCA pre-roll at hellomood.com with promo code KILLTONY. Have an infinitely good time. That's hello, M-O-O-D.com, code KILLTONY. We're back to the bucket, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what happens here. You've seen how crazy it can get. This is 60 Seconds Uninterrupted by Davey Jackson, the Kill Tony debut or reappearance of Davy Jackson. Uh, so I've been trying out some new jerk-off techniques. Uh, actually invented a couple new techniques, not to brag, but uh, one of them's very similar to The Stranger. I feel like the Kill Tony universe is pretty familiar with The Stranger. All right. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, it's a jerk-off technique where you sit on your own hand until it goes numb, and then you jerk off, and it feels like a stranger's jerking you off. Yeah. Pretty cool technique. I can't take credit for that one. I did not invent it. But the one I invented is actually very similar, though. It's called the reverse stranger. That's right. It's where you sit on your own dick. <laughs> until it goes numb. Then you jerk off. And it feels like you're jerking off a stranger. Pretty fucking cool, guys. That's a good one. Not a bad technique. Yeah. That's a good one. This final technique is the one I'm most excited about. Been trying it out a lot. Uh, it's where you sit on someone else's dick. <laughs> until it goes numb. And that is actually just gay. It's very, very gay. Been going through a lot. Pretty confused. I'm Davey Jackson. Thank you. There you go. Davey Jackson. Welcome back. You've been on this show before. Yes, sir. I remember you well. Uh, so welcome back. Thank you. How's Thank life you. going for you? Uh, it's, it's good, man. I, I got too confident and put my hair in a ponytail tonight, <laughs> which I, I felt good about. But then uh, one of my friends told me I look like a founding father. <laughs> I was pretty upset about that. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Four fathers? I'm trying to fuck a girl with no fathers. You know what I'm saying? Wow. <laughs> look at this. He was ready, ready <laughs> for an interview on Kill Tony. This is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Almost someone that seemed like they wanted to be on a comedy show. Crazy. <laughs> How's the pollen affecting you today? Bro, I don't know what that's in reference to, but I've been snorting a lot of coke, so I don't know if it's the <laughs> pollen or... <laughs> Very good. Yes. Where's the craziest place you've done cocaine at? <laughs> Off of Miss Doubt Flamer's tits, I guess. Uh... Doubt Flamer. Now, was Doubt, Doubt, was Doubt Flamer, was that a joke or was that a slip-up? Uh, I, I think he's calling you reasons. a gay Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well, you just I, talked yourself out of a titty fuck, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so the joke's on you. Sit on your own dick again, huh? <laughs> uh, 
Oh, boy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sipping on the Sisurp over here. The great Elaine. Okay, so, uh, Davy Jackson, we I remember you used to sell, what, pain pills or Oxycontin or something like that? What any, was it? any pills. Right, yeah, you were pills. selling pills. What yeah. are you up to nowadays? I just got a hernia. Uh, oh. Yeah. Okay, how'd you do that? Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, literally blowing my nose too hard. My guts popped out. Wow. How yeah. old are you? What's that? How old are you? 40. Fuck. Fuck. Oh boy. <laughs> God, that's hey, scary. That's a... Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, just wait till you get my age. Your clit starts growing pubic hairs. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you sit on your own dick again, huh? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. It sucks. Getting older sucks. And I'm, I'm going to tell you. So the hernia thing, I feel bad for you. Well, how'd you, how'd you fix it? What'd you do? I haven't gotten it fixed yet. It's still fucking there. Uh... I have to go for surgery, so guess who's re-upping on pain pills? Let's fucking go. Let's go. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Business is a booming. When What's your love life 30? like right now? You're a good-looking guy. Ponytail energies. I appreciate that. Uh, dude, it's, it's shit right now, actually. How's that possible? Dude, I think I fucked all the Latin girls in San Antonio. I think I just ran through uh, all of them. Okay. So I'm having to go to white girls, and they're boring as fuck. Holy shit, y'all are boring. What's the difference? Between a Latin girl and a white girl? Yes. Literally everything. Yeah. See, yeah. there they are. Yeah. Right, run down the list. Run down the list. Uh, one makes well, you peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. The other one stabs you. <laughs> there we go. That's a big difference. Yeah. 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 Uh, Who's crazy? They, in the they come with kids. Right. And that's great. I mean, I love kids. Not like that, but I. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I walked into that one. You do dress like a softball coach that beats the children. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a tough gig to get. <laughs> I wore the vest tonight. I thought Tony would be wearing one, too. I'm... I, am a, I am a big supporter of the vest. Thank as you. Of late. I just got that. a new one this weekend. My friend gave me a new vest. I'm excited about it. It's got a fur interior. You'll probably see it on the next episode of Kill Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Vests are fun. When I first, They're great. When I first got here, I started dressing like a cowboy for a while. I and then I'm that. looking out, and like the real cowboys wear vests. Like, you're from Texas? Yeah, you're, yeah exactly. See what I mean? Like, and I'm like, wait, what's the thing with the vest? And I'm like, it's weird because your arms are going to get chilly and your body's going to be warm. I don't get it. And then I tried it. Fucking unbelievable. It looks so cool. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. So cool. It's that a cool. fucking no-brainer. It's a purse. Like, it's also a fanny pack, a purse, you name it. It Look connects everything. Instead of having a big bundle of keys, you know what I mean? For all the, for all the natural uh, 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 amenities that you have in your life, you know what I mean? Uh, in your pocket, you have them in your vest pocket. He's talking about drugs, people. What the fuck? <laughs> Do you wear a condom when you fuck? Ooh. Well, when he's with a Latina <laughs> chick, yes. I, tr I try to. I really do try to. Sure. Uh, but it's, it's actually the Latin girls that it just ends up coming off every time. Yeah. Do they yeah. take it off or do you take it off or is it... Uh... It's a joint effort, I think. It, to just disappear from wishful thinking? <laughs> <laughs> they just snatch it up in their pussy. Oh, okay. okay. Not even I. I didn't even like that the way you said that. Yeah, that was. And I've been offering up free titty fucks, but that was crossing the line, sir. <laughs> Davy, you already have a big joke book, right? I do. Yes. Well, we're just gonna red band. I'd like uh, to have you on the Secret Show Thursday. Wow! Thank you. On a real show. A real setup. A real punchline. A real 60 seconds from Davy Jackson. Uh, this handwriting is pretty bad, but I'm going to try this anyway. It's Jose. Oh, how about a hand for the lovely Heidi, everybody? Make sure you follow her. Gina with three A's dot HG or something like that. I don't know. Camsofunny.com. Figure it out. All right. This last name is a tough one. This is out of the bucket. Make some noise for Jose Vanellas or Vanellas or Oineas. Here he is, Jose, everybody. Make some noise for Jose. These people wait all day for this. I used to, uh, I used to weigh well over 300 pounds. Yeah, doctors kept calling me weird names like severely unhealthy or morbidly obese. I just thought I was round and lovable. You know. I also suffered from uh, what I believe a lot of people also struggle with in this room. It's called uh, being stupid. Oh. Uh, I only say I was stupid because I let my mom do my back-to-school shopping at Tractor Supply. Yeah, she got me a shirt, had a picture of a barn on it. It said, and I quote, 
what happens in the barn stays in the barn. That's bestiality 101, guys. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. All right, before I go, uh, I have a buddy. His name's Nick. Uh, every time I see him, I go, hey, Nick, 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 Nickelodeon. You guys get it? It's because he's a pedophile. <laughs> Hi. Wow. All right. Okay. Jose, how do you say that last name? Ornelas. Ornelas. Wow. Okay. Hi, Jose. How long have you been doing stand-up in New York? Um. <laughs> Tony. A little over a year. You were in New York? No, sir. Oh, Jesus. Where at? Almost having San, San Marcos. Where? Ah, uh, San Antonio. San Antonio. Yes, sir. You, you were close. That? You, you were see close. See how fucking close. dialed in I am. I can tell you the freeway to get there right <sighs> now. That's the New York of Texas. Though. It Everyone is. Everyone knows that. It is. San Marcos is the uh, the least uh, least funny part of Texas. Okay, Jose. God awful appearance. I mean, unbelievably bad. Incredible. Yeah, you made Andrew Ginsberg look like Dave Chappelle. <laughs> oh. So uh, you brought the show down to a new low. You've seen the show before, correct? Oh, I mean, of course not, sir. You haven't seen the show? I mean, I've seen clips. I've seen what happens. But Do you like, know what happens at this part? Uh, yeah, this is where I get flamed, dog. Well, not necessarily. Okay. Can you tell okay. us interesting things about your life that maybe um, would have been more interesting for you to talk about tonight see, in your minute? Um, Any fun time, facts about you that you think makes you different than everybody else here? Different than everybody? Well, first of all, I'm me. All right, type shit, type shit, first of all. Uh, what? Thank you. What? Huh? What'd you just say? Did you just say, I'm me? I'm me. Oh, fuck We're all you, dude. All fuck right, you. all right, all right, all right, all right. You fuck want something you. real? You want something real? You want something real? Elementary school, right? I was feeling not too good. I went to use the restroom. I had to take a number two, and then I threw up in my underwear. You know what? I still had to walk to class to tell my teacher, hey, hey, I, uh, I got to go to the nurse. So did you or did you not shit your pants? Oh, I no, I shit in the toilet, but I threw up in my pants. Have you ever done that? No. What exactly. The fuck are you talking about? Fucking new no. lows, dude. New lows. No. Elaine, close. stop. You're gonna make it funny. I'm sorry. Uh, Jose, I'm just gonna I'm gonna save you. I'm gonna get you out of here right no, now. No, don't do that. Yeah. Oh. No, I'm gonna do it. You gotta go, buddy. No joke book. Keep at no it. No little joke book. No big joke book. Prepare next time. Do a minute of stand-up comedy. It's okay. There he goes, Jose, ladies and gentlemen. There goes Jose. But you know what? I want to do something really special right now. Because, you know, we've seen some bombs tonight. We've, we've hit some lows. And you saw Cam Patterson bring it back. You saw Casey Rocket come out with energy and silliness and fun punchlines. Let's do something really, really fun. And when you hear that noise, you know some shit's about to go down. Uh... Someone, one of our regulars, has taken a long hiatus to prepare for his rematch at the Forum. It has been months since this man has done a minute on the show. If you know the words, sing it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Hans Kim. Told you it's not easy. I uh, love it here in Texas because I can say retard here. Just can't jerk off to them anymore. Just gotta picture it in your head like the good old days. Um, yeah, love uh, the ladies. You know, a lot of ladies get mad at me because they send me nudes and I don't send nudes in return. I'm like, why would I return a gift with a felony? <laughs> I was recently in San Francisco. It's the mecca of Asians. I love San Francisco. It's the only place Asian women have asses. I was like, holy shit, is that an Asian girl with an ass or a 12-year-old Latino boy? Thank you. Wow, Hans Kim. I miss you, buddy. I miss you too, Tony. Wow. 
The pop from the crowd was insane. The return of one of the all-time greats. You've watched him write and perform hundreds and hundreds of minutes on this show, and here he is, back, better than ever, still Asian. <laughs> You could tell that he's coming off a weekend with me in Utah, which keeps being a running theme on the show because I did take him and Cam Patterson and Casey Rocket to Utah. And Hans is the only one baller enough to go straight to the airport and buy a shirt. Uh, <laughs> try to get the people on his side right from the arrival. How, how did you end up with a Utah hoodie like that? I, for, I didn't check the weather. I thought it'd be like Texas, beautiful and habitable to human beings. Uh-huh, unless you're allergic to pollen. <laughs> Oy vey, it makes you unfunny. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have the same reaction to pollen as Andrew Ginsberg, but... <laughs> so, Did you happen to see Andrew Ginsberg earlier? Yeah, he was, uh, yeah, he was there. <laughs> I, uh, apparently so he's nice. allergic to jokes. <laughs> <laughs> My sweet, sweet Hans Kim. Elaine, what do you think about Hans? Well, as far as Asian uh, comedians go, you're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, no, Hans, you're very funny. Your jokes are always on point. You're always writing the new stuff. What is, uh, so you got to Utah. What would you see? What would you do? I mean, Utah was great. Women are very beautiful. They're Mormons. They're beautiful, but they don't put out. Um, <laughs> so you can look, but don't touch. That was my policy. But I did a, do a little bit of touching. There you go, yeah, how Hans. Does, how does Hans Kim find the uh, guy? What, what's your move on the road? You know what I'm saying? You slide into DMs? What do you do? I just hang around and wait for someone famous to invite women to the show. Uh, oh. <laughs> what? Okay. What the fuck, Hans? <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about, dude. What? Why would I do that? <laughs> I'm gay, remember? <laughs> I love being gay. <laughs> it's a song. Ooh, penis in the butt. Hey. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Red Band, for the easy out there. Okay. Um, I love it, Hans. Uh, anything else we should know about? What do you promote? What do you want to plug something? Uh, I'm in like North Carolina, South Carolina coming up soon, doing okay. a bunch of dates there. So check it out on my website. I have it's also uh, in North and South Korea coming up. Uh, <laughs> okay, what else? Um, I am uh, in an open relationship, so <laughs> feel free to take advantage of that. Hans is what you think he is. He's brutally honest and ridiculously horny. <laughs> What's the oldest so, chick you've been so, with, Hans? What What'd you say, Elaine? What's the oldest chick you've been with? <laughs> Probably like 68. Holy shit. Oh my god. <laughs> Hold on. This might be we've, the guy that I've interviewed the most <laughs> uh, that's been on this show tonight, and we find this out right now. Yeah, Elaine brought it out of me. I yeah. Mean, Wow. I'd like to put it in me. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about this 68-year-old, Hans. Where were you? I was in Seattle, Washington, doing uh, open mics. And, uh, you know, this is Asian. She was a grandmother. Or, no, she was just a mother. I guess she had a really young daughter. And, uh, yeah, I didn't meet the daughter. There was no weirdness, but... Um, so you don't I, think the 68 was weird? <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, she saw you at an open mic, and she's like... You're funny. Come back to my place. She never said I was funny, but... Okay. <laughs> I pictured it in my head. You went back to her place? Yes. Okay. Tell us how this goes down exactly. It was great. Yeah. She actually did this thing where I was in missionary, and then she put her legs in between mine, and she squeezed, and it was like it was like a 49-year-old vagina. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Elaine, do you know about this move? Well, I do know that if you're 69 or 68 year old, uh, you get a free bowl of chicken fried rice. <laughs> if it's Asian on Asian, which it sounds like it was, yeah? Yeah. Now, are you, oh, mostly, are you only attracted to old Asians, or does no. an old white ever sneak in there? <laughs> I'm attracted to, you know, young Asians, but uh, yeah, it was an open mic, micer. That was all I could get. Wow. But she was great. Okay. You. Uh, did you wear a condom? I think so. Yeah, she was With pretty responsible. With a 68-year-old. Yeah, she probably had a lot of history. 
she right. probably did. It's, it's not like you could get her pregnant, so I guess she was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, if it's over 60, I can vouch, Hans. There's a lot of stuff up. In, I've got a, D, a DVD of Frasier in my pussy right now. <laughs> So I can wanna, confirm. I see the corner of it hanging out. <laughs> there really is a DVD of Frasier in Elaine's pussy right now, right, what, Ben? What was she wearing? Like, was she like sweatpants? She had two bags. Like, she had a samurai <laughs> sword on her, <laughs> something like that. Some type of. Uh, what she have, Hans? Was she wearing she, uh, a uh, Asian takeout box? <laughs> <laughs> she looked a lot like Elaine's outfit tonight. No, she looked like a young. You know, everything looked great until you know the face was a little old, but. Sure. Other than that, it looked like it wasn't what I was doing. Wow. I don't know if that last sentence added up for us, Hans. <laughs> now, what's your move with a 68-year-old? That's my last question. What's your, what's your move? How do, you, how do you grease the wheels? I'm just like, hey, you got any cookies for me? Or, you know, I, I'll Ooh. sit on your lap. You know, I'm down. For... And she's like, you ever heard of Andrew Ginsberg? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got allergies, I think. Yep. Is that him? Yeah. He's, he's a great guy. Okay. What, uh, when, do you think you made her orgasm? The Definitely not. No. Definitely not. Yeah. What happened exactly? Did you not last long? Uh, no, she was just like, I'm 68. I'm not going to let you make me come like that. Wow, she told you that? Yeah. God, see how asking another question sometimes gets you to the fucking end zone? <laughs> she told you specifically that you weren't going to make her come. Yeah. She could tell. She's like, you're not good enough. <laughs> was did you, was did she you... a massage therapist or something? Like, what was she? Like, you know what yeah, she did Yeah, do you know what living? she did for work? Uh, no, she was just normal Asian. So, yes. <laughs> what, was, what was her place like? It was like a house in Seattle, two stories, pretty, you, pretty nice. You walked in and you just heard... <laughs> I actually know that song. <laughs> Did you just play that? Yeah, that was me. John, stop. Let me sh shine for a second. Stop playing it right, John. Oh. <laughs> I'm backwards. Good, I'm backwards. That's pretty good. I'm trying my best. Other way. F shut up, mewling. Right. You ate a hamburger during sound check, you fucking faggot. <laughs> He's <laughs> trying to get revenge on me over here. <laughs> Play it Roy! No one cares about the notes. <laughs> I can play the joke. There you go. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> god damn it. No, that was it. The OCD and the MSG are all mixing right now. This is incredible. <laughs> all right, Hans, you're a fucking legend. His Great first job, appearance in months. Thank you, Tony. Do you want to say anything to Rick Diaz out there? I'm sure um, he's watching. You're a bad person, and everyone's going to know it soon. Wow. He's looking for his second victory in a row. Hans Kim, live from the Forum in Los Angeles. Kill Tony makes its return to L.A. at the Kia Forum. What a special treat, huh? All right. The show's going long, but let's get one more uh, bucket pull out here. Make some noise for your next comedian. 60 seconds for Maddie G, everybody. Maddie G. Do uh do gay guys queef? I think COVID tests are a lot like uh STD tests. If you don't take it, you don't have it. Um, I've been taking biotin to uh, grow out all my facial hair. I didn't know that biotin was a hair supplement for all your hair. I got a bush down there. So, yeah, now every time I want to take a dick pic, I got to hire a team of Mexicans just to come over. I've basically been taking Scott's Turf Builder for my balls. Yeah, it's a real jungle down there. Jose does good work though. He makes my little bonsai tree look like a giant sequoia. Thank you. Let me tell you something. Here's, 
let me tell you, I'm gonna surprise everybody right now because you're like, oh shit, Tony's gonna go ballistic. But you know what? You know what I liked about that? You bombed eloquently. Thank it you. It was beautiful. And with no tricks, no shaky mic, no, and I'll be honest, no selling. You didn't try to trick us. You tried your material that you thought would work, you delivered it like it worked, and then you kept going. You did the next thing, Ian Edwards. I agree with you, and he's not from New York. <laughs> well, I don't know, I think there's a chance. You visited there recently, am I correct? No, sir. Oh, okay, perfect. Thank God. <laughs> uh, how long you been doing stand-up? Uh, this is probably my, uh, like, tenth mic. Oh, adorable. You're doing just fine. Eight years, six years. You did better than those guys. Fuck those guys. Okay. So, how old are you? I am 26. What do you do for a living? I'm a mechanical designer. What does that mean, exactly? Um, I make desks for schools and everything like that. Okay. Like, uh, lab equipment, too. Okay. Very cool. Uh, what do you do for fun? Um, you ride a I, motorcycle? No. <laughs> okay. I go, uh, I go fishing and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, fishing. What else? Stuff like that. Um, I, used, I used to sell guns, actually. Okay. Yep. Illegally? Yeah. Legally and legally. Okay. <laughs> there you go. You ever steal a bicycle from a retard? <laughs> no, I can't say that. Or as they call it, a tricycle. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Um, all right. Now I'm bombing. It's contagious up here. It's gone airborne. It's, guys, don't worry. It's the pollen. Um, all right. So, Matty G, most interesting thing about you? You have any special skills or talents? Um, probably that I did sell guns during COVID. That was kind of crazy. Um, people would come in with, like, their uh, face mask still on, and I would sell them a gun. Is that the um, end of the story? Yeah, that's pretty much it, yeah. They'd come in. They'd say, hey, I want that gun. And I'd be like, yes, sir, right away. You should open with that. Thanks. Yeah. I'll... What is happening right now? It's okay. <laughs> We're going to get there. Maddie G, you've seen the show before. Mm -hmm. What's something interesting in this interview portion that you think you might want to bring up at this part? Makes you different than everybody else. Mm, COVID was actually really good to me. Yeah? Tell me more. Yeah, so, uh, like I said, I sold guns, so I would be the first one to, like, see all the ammo, and for some reason, everybody would want ammo during COVID. I don't know. They wanted to shoot COVID, I guess. I don't know. And uh, I would take it and I would like buy it at a discount. Where was this at? What it. city is this? Austin, Texas. Okay. <laughs> COVID also lined up with the uh, BLM movement, didn't it? Uh, yeah, it did. Yeah. So everybody's so going you, crazy. You think it was COVID. Do you think it had anything to do with the fact that there were riots in the streets in the many major cities? You were blaming it on, on a... No. I didn't want to, I didn't want to say it. <laughs> Ian, you're getting defensive like I'm a no, New York comedian. I am, I am defensive. <laughs> but, but I live in California, right? So the first day of COVID, I was in Burbank. And everybody was... He's so stupid, he thinks you guys will recognize the Tonight Show theme because it's filmed in Burbank. Yeah. You literally just cut off Ian for th that and, and oh, reference. Everybody was buying guns. They everybody. were. It was, okay. I didn't even know they had gun shops in Burbank yeah, they, until that They have that day. one across from like the Costco or something. It's a big one. But I, there's like more than you could. Like, yeah. I'm just driving down the street and I see lying there, lying there. I don't know what people thought was going to happen during COVID. But when he says he works in a gun shop and he sold a lot of guns, I, like, I get it. Mm -hmm. What's the most suspicious gun you've ever sold? Did you ever sell one to a guy named Jerry Carlin? Uh, <laughs> no, but I did have this uh, one situation where this, uh, two, this couple came in, white dude from like East Texas, and he was like looking at the gun, and then all of a sudden when it came time to do the paperwork for the gun, he was like, nah. He's going to get it. He's going to buy it. And it was just like this black dude. So, oh, yeah. Yo, Ian Edwards. Fuck did you say it like that? <laughs> we're checking. We're going to go to our senior African-American correspondent, Ian Edwards, here for another moment. <laughs> yeah, now it's his theme song. It's no longer the Tonight Show theme. Hit that Ian Edwards theme for us, Red Band. Let us, hey, it's time for our black hey, correspondent. Hey, hey, man, do me a favor and say black dude again. 
black dude. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta give him credit. He said it pretty well. He did, he did say it pretty well. Like, like you ever sold somebody a gun and they later on saw them on the news? Yes, actually, yeah. Really? Yeah. I knew it. Shit. Great question. Ian Edwards from Half Court. I love it. Uh, yeah, there he is. That's why he is our senior African-American correspondent <laughs> live on the scene. Now, tell us about this white guy you saw on the news. <laughs> And oh! Did, and did he perform earlier tonight and have on glasses? <laughs> <laughs> he killed himself. Holy oh, God. hey! Okay. Oopsie daisy. Okay. Oopsie wow. daisy. Thanks for coming. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my God. What the fuck? All right. Maddie, here's a little joke book. Good stuff, buddy. Get out of here. Go sell guns. <laughs> Go so good. The show's going too long. We're in overtime right now, but I realized we didn't have a female stand-up comedian tonight. So in order to make up for that, I pulled out of the bucket until I got a lady. You guys ready for your final bucket pull of the night? 60 seconds uninterrupted for Kelly Quinn, everybody. Kelly Quinn. My husband always gives me grief for saving all my fast food napkins in his car. I tend to value worthless things, like our children. He also isn't real fond of the fact that I like true crime podcasts. He says he's worried for my soul. And he should be worried, because statistically, I am the most likely to murder him. He's a history buff, and he's fine with war. I guess domestic homicide is just not in a big enough volume. But it does answer for me the question of nurture or nature. He is German. <laughs> we are almost empty nesters, so I thought we should travel more. He said, yes. We should take the path of Lewis and Clark from Pittsburgh to the Oregon coast. It's 4,900 miles. We'll go through 60 native territories. It'll be badass. I thought it would be nice to go to Dallas. There you go, Kelly Quinn. I saved you from the bear there. I knew you were about to get to it. Great stuff, Kelly. Thanks. Adorable. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, it'll be two years in August. Two years in August. Congratulations. I love it. This is one of your high school friends, right, Elaine? I think we go to the same stylist slash gynecologist. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing better on you. Yeah, well, no, you look good. You look good. No, you're adorable. Uh, very, very interesting, Kelly. So you started two years ago. What made you start? You seem like the kind of person that would... Uh, that would write blogs about how you hate stand-up comedy and about how it's ruining society. And here you are out here doing it, calling your children worthless with a big smile, having fun, thriving. I love to see it. Normally you're asking for the manager and here you are out here. People are, there's a ruckus in the crowd. People are breaking glasses over their heads. They're so excited for you. It's, it's Kelly, not Karen. Oh. Did I call you Karen? You said I'd ask for a manager. You, you oh, do look I see. like a Karen, though. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt about it. Have you ever asked for the manager? Uh, I have, but to give compliments. Whoa, look okay. at that. Okay. Wow. She's like, wow. <laughs> yeah, bizarro Karen. Th that's not true. <laughs> What's the nicest thing you've said to, uh, said to a waiter at a restaurant? Um, nice ass. Oh, okay. Whoa. Wow. Well, Amazing. What well, race was that person? I don't know. Oh, she doesn't see color, everybody. <laughs> and for that, we're going to check in with our senior African-American correspondent, <laughs> Ian Edwards. Here we go. Hey. She doesn't see color, Ian. Uh, to be honest, I checked out when she said my husband. <laughs> <laughs> no, but pretty good shit. Like two years, yeah. you know, there's been some dudes up here who have 
claim that allegedly they've been doing comedy for <laughs> seven and eight years and that they're from fucking New York. Yeah. <laughs> so you've done considerably better than them. Where do you Thank live, you. Callie? Wichita Falls, Texas. Wichita oh, Falls. Ooh, a big pop from the crowd. Where is that? It's like five hours some which way. I don't know. North? The ish. It's yeah. like almost Oklahoma. Okay, yeah, that would be north. Yep. <laughs> They've got a Dairy Queen there, right? Several. Several Dairy Queens, Ooh. yeah. Are you a fan of Dairy Queen? I am. I like Brahms better, though. Okay, yeah, that's another ice cream place, yeah. Brahms <laughs> is, uh, it's a, yeah, it's good. I love your smile. Your jokes are tight. You're, sm you're, you're effervescent. You're affable. You look like me after a red band titty fuck. You really, uh... That is true. <laughs> oh, no sound effect? You got shy. <laughs> there you go, a chain. Saw is what he came up with on that one, everybody. A chainsaw. Okay, so Kelly, uh, did you, you used to have a job? You have a job? I have a job. I'm not that what, old. What do you do? Uh, I am a classic rock DJ. Are you serious? Wow. On like an FM radio station? Yes, real terrestrial radio. Wow. wow. Do you have a special DJ name? Just Kelly Quinn. Kelly Quinn in the afternoons, mornings? Um, nine to two, so midday. Mid so a lot, you're playing a lot of Bare Naked Ladies and Sugar Ray? <laughs> no. No, it's classic rock. It's not shit radio. Okay. Right. Goddamn right. Wow. <laughs> it's amazing. And you love classic rock. I do. Can you give us a little example of you tossing to a song? Can you, or like what you do in between songs? Can we just hear your true radio voice? Let's all close our eyes. The stylings of Kelly Quinn. Here we go. <laughs> uh, 1047 The Bear, Kelly Quinn. That was Pink Floyd. We're going to head into something sweet and sexy like a little Metallica one on 1047 The Bear. Ooh, wow. I love it. I love it. And now we're going to do something special. We're going to have, a lot of people might not know this, because I, I didn't tell you guys, but Elaine also is an afternoon DJ. Uh, the Afternoon Drive with Elaine, 95.5 KLOS. Yeah. And here is an example of Elaine DJing. <laughs> it's 6.23 p.m. right now. We're playing the phrase that pays. John Mayer, we got free John Mayer tickets to see him at the Palladium tonight. Call it the phrase that pays, 102.5. Be careful outside. It's getting dicey. If you're going to try stand-up comedy, put on a mask because there's pollen outside. You don't want to fuck up your one chance on Kill Tony. Call in right now, 421-1015. Get two free John Mayer. Oh, we're going to take that call right now. Hello? <laughs> yeah, hi, it's me, Red Man. I'm looking for a titty box. <laughs> Her knees are blown out. <laughs> she's gonna need to. She's gonna need to hit up Dr. Phil. Take care of those knees after that. Oh my goodness. That was good. Though. That was good. <laughs> Kelly, you seem like such a sweet, real lady. How your kids are almost out of the house? Yes. How much longer you got? Uh, graduation's May 25th for my youngest. Okay. Are you still with your husband? Do you have a piece of tape around your finger? What is that? Uh, it's a register receipt from the burger joint because I walked out without my wedding ring. Who hit you? <laughs> you walked out of the burger joint without your no, wedding I, ring? No, I walked out of my house without my wedding ring, and so I did what I did. I'm a woman. I improvise. Just, so just to That's let really Hans sweet. Kim know, you're off limits. You wrapped a receipt around your finger. That is adorable. Uh, Andrew Ginsberg's the only other comedian that keeps all of his receipts on him uh, that we've had up tonight. Incredible stuff. One last question before I let you go. What is something that would surprise us about you or shock us about you? You're, you're, you just seem sweet and real. Do you have any guilty pleasures or something like that? Is there something naughty that Kelly Quinn does every once in a while? Perhaps it could be in the bedroom or somewhere you go or I'm something a, you do. I'm a big fan of rock concerts and crowd surfing. and You crowd surf? I, I did until I broke my neck a oh, year ago. There you go. I had a feeling that was coming. Uh, you have real broken neck energies, Kelly. <laughs> how did you? 
How did you break your neck? Uh, well, I was a college gymnast and I had a real bad fall onto my head. And apparently after like 25 years, you can grow a bone spur yeah. into your spinal column and then you can just wake up one morning paralyzed. There you go. Absolutely. You thought all the good spurs were in San Antonio. <laughs> Turns out they're in Wichita Falls, Texas as well. Uh, anything else for Kelly, everybody? Are you free Thursday? Absolutely. I would love to have you on The Secret Show. Whoa. Thank Kelly Quinn getting a real comedy set two years into her career. She's going to have to make the drive back from Wichita Falls. And I'll yep. tell you what, I'm going to give you one of these big joke books because I know you're actually going to use it. There she goes. Kelly Quinn, everybody. Look at them, two best friends. Look at the shoulders on Elaine. I mean, unbelievable. <laughs> what type of fucking offensive line woman are you? You are a fucking thick piece of beef. You know that, Elaine? Well, I'm also Casey Rocket's bodyguard. Oh, wow. Look at that. Okay, a show like this, there's only one way to end it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Hall of Famer, the record holder of appearances all time, interviews, sets, new minutes. This is him. The Wichita Falls Wibbly Wobbler, the Memphis Strangler, the Vanilla Gorilla. This is the Big Red Machine, William Montgomery. First off, Tony, I'm very excited to announce that Punky Johnson and I are officially dating and she's actually pregnant. Um, April Fools, okay. Ah. Anybody else jealous they didn't get the invite to Puff Daddy's parties? Everybody's all mad and I'm all like, oh yeah, terrible. Maybe I should go undercover to investigate. People are saying Cuba Gooding Jr. committed a crime, but I'll tell you what the real crime is. He won an Oscar. Oh, a black guy plays an athlete. How'd he get into character? What a stretch. As a defense attorney, I must advise that admitting to shooting the sheriff, but then claiming you didn't shoot the deputy is a bad legal defense. <laughs> Okay, that's my time. Thank you, Tony. A brilliant, brilliant joke there at the end. Shooting the sheriff, but not the deputy. Wow. <laughs> Amazing, William. You did it again. Another unbelievable set. Very, very fun. How do you feel? I feel pretty good, other than the fact that there is now a dead squirrel up in our chimney, and it has been smelling like death for the past three days now, Tony. And I actually had an exterminator man come by today and he starts telling me, oh, I can't go up on the roof. If I go up on the roof this one way, I'm gonna roll off and die. If I go off the other way, I'm gonna roll off and die. And I'm like, dude, you're not just a friend. I'm trying to fucking pay you money to get rid of this fucking thing. Why are you just giving me excuses, you dumb piece of shit? This is why you're fucking getting dead squirrels out of people's fucking chimneys because you're a dumbass you motherfucker he's giving me all these excuses tony and i just want the smell gone but it's going to be wednesday so i have to live with it for another couple days that's so. what happens when you exterminate his last name is ginsburg yeah <laughs> actually i'm <laughs> allergic to squirrels i can't get up there i'm allergic to rooftops as well i do not perform well under these conditions god tony i had to stop myself i was fucking holding the microphone like this dumb new york pieces of shit Holy shit! <laughs> William, William, they're, they're not from New York. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's they, they perform in New York. That's the defining characteristic. I mean, don't try to... I get it, you're from fucking New York, but you have to admit those people were fucking terrible, and I have a dead squirrel in my... Yeah, thanks, dumbass. Holy shit! Whoa! <laughs> The squirrel in your chimney is probably covered with ash and soot. To talk about this more, we're gonna go with our senior African-American correspondent. <laughs> what do you think about the squirrel in blackface in the chimney right now? <laughs> and that's the only reason why he's trying to get rid of it. 
You know, I mean, he is racist as shit, though, Ian. I mean, it's a real racist fucking... How am I racist? <laughs> no, the squirrel's racist. How's the squirrel? How's the dead squirrel racist? He's been saying the N-word a bunch, and I'm like, dude, I can't fucking... I can't do this shit. He's trying to get me to say the N-word, Ian, but I haven't been saying it. <laughs> I haven't been saying it. <laughs> Listen, even even when you say just the N word, I hear the E R. <laughs> well, that was a long time ago. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It is amazing. <laughs> Elaine, what do you think? William, you're very likable. Uh, you don't look like you've bathed in a while, but that's okay. What does your shirt say? It says storage, etc. It's the people, uh, Christina Gonzalez. It's the place where I was working right before the pandemic, and I still hope Christina Gonzalez is dead and in hell. She was. Whoa. Was that your boss? Yeah, she was a stupid fucking Latina woman, which said the details don't matter on that, but she was a stupid <laughs> fat bitch. And I would catch her stupid fucking ass. This is when I was drinking and doing blow all the time, so I'd show up fucking hungover as fuck, and she would be sleeping in the break room, and I'd take pictures pictures of the security camera and she would get mad and there was one time Ian I did have a good George Floyd joke during the pandemic and I'm good friends with the two black guys who I'm working with and she has bad intention telling them that I was some racist person it was bullshit it was she's a dumbass what was the, uh, what was the George Floyd joke yeah what was the yeah, George what, Floyd joke yeah, we all want to know Floyd I <laughs> I heard George Floyd's last wishes were to make change for a 20 <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> and with that, we check in with our senior African-American correspondent, Ian Edwards. What do we think about the joke? Just, just based on that, I feel like he murdered that black squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> there were, uh, there were red, uh, red hairs around the corpse. Uh, <laughs> William, you did it again. We fucking love you. It doesn't get much better Great than that, job. right, Elaine? What no, do you think? You're unbelievable. You've got... Uh, You've got, you just, it's, you can't, you can smell the mental illness on you, but, uh, but you're dressed like all the people in high school that I really, uh, that I admired. You know, you, 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 you cool. dressed, uh, do you, do you address yourself? Well, I've just, I can't stop looking at your fucking nasty fucking neck, you old bitch. It looks just like Whoa. the fucking oh. squirrel that's dead in my chimney, bitch. Oh, <laughs> okay, you know what? I was waiting for somebody to make fun of my neck, and I think I fucking had it. This neck looks like all the fucking pussies that you fucked with your tiny inch dick. <laughs> and you know what? Oh, is that funny, bitch? God, and you're stupid. God, let me see them titties, bitch. Oh. I can't believe you let your girl walk out like that, that dumbass. Oh, that is my shit. daughter's friend. You stop that. <laughs> William, I guess I'm, I'm getting angry because, well, I get angry when I get turned on. Red, red band music. Uh-oh, here you go. Thank you for being a friend. Traveling down the road and back. I guess what I'm trying to say. William, I've never seen a ginger I like. I've traveled the world. I've seen everything. And tonight has been the greatest night of my life. Come here. We've seen good jokes and bad jokes and Jews and blacks. And that fat guy almost had a heart attack tonight. But that's what you get when you sign up for Kill Tony. You try your best. You hold it on your side. It's love. And if you strike out, go back home and call me for a titty bump. You call
ladies and gentlemen, Skylight Frame, game time. <laughs> if they're still sponsors, we'd like to thank them. How about one more time for the great William Montgomery? I don't think there's a comedian in the world that could possibly do better than that. Wait, I wrote a couple jokes down. Keep the music uh -oh, down. Wait a second. Wait a second, ladies and gentlemen. Call me for a titty fuck. Oh, yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Just keep the, keep the music on, keep the music on. for Elaine, everybody. So I met Tony, uh, I met Tony a couple weeks ago and he said, you come by uh, the Mother Ship and uh, try, and this is a real honor, this is my favorite show in the entire world, so thank you so much for letting me be a part of the Mother Ship. I wrote a couple jokes uh, real quick. Uh, Hans doesn't believe in God, but he believes in Godzilla. Uh, <laughs> Fuck, uh, uh, shit. If Cam, if Cam Patterson's here, who's punching women in the streets of New York? Um, fuck, I don't know. Uh, Casey Rocket looks like the first person to OD on cookies. Um, fuck, Hans Cam, if you look like uh, an Asian Disney character named Gookfi. Um, uh, what else? Uh, okay, Cam likes rocks, Casey smokes rocks. Uh, Casey, you look like the dollar store version of Kyle Rittenhouse. Uh, shit. Uh, uh, comedy hasn't come easy to Hans. It takes a lot of drive, which is hard when you're Asian. Uh, oh boy. And then I just got some uh, some uh, some pickup lines from Red Band that he texted me late in the middle of the night. Um, are you Hurricane Katrina? Because you're blowing me away with your hot tits. Can I come on your back? Uh, uh, what else? What else? Cam looks like his first special was released on a ring doorbell camera. Um, call me for a titty box. Call me for a titty box. Ian Edwards. Follow him on Instagram at Ian Edwards Comic. Follow Adam Ray Comedy on YouTube right now. His new crowd work special is out. The drawing from Ryan J. E. Belt is unbelievable. Adam Ray Comedy on YouTube, Addy and Edwards Comic on Instagram. How about one more time for the best damn man in the land, Carlos Sosa, Raul Vallejo, Fernando Castillo, Michael Gonzalez, the great Nick Lewis on the bass, John Dees on the keys, and Matt Mueling on guitar. The drawing from Ryan J. Belt's incredible, RyanJBelt.com. Let's see what local artist Chris Rogers drew up over there. Whoa! William and Cam, or Casey Rocket, William and Casey. Uh, you gotta love it. Another very fun episode, Red Band. Check out the secret show every Thursday at the Sunset Strip, ATX.com. NinjaBuses.com, thank you. Uh, there are transport this weekend in Dallas and Houston. Very fun stuff. Thank you to everybody, including the audience. God bless you guys. Good night, everyone. The Forum, Madison Square. The Sunset Strip Comedy Club in Austin, Texas is now open. Check out Red Band's secret show every Thursday. Go to sunsetstripatx.com for tickets.